Hello, everyone, and welcome uh, to the second special episode of the. Uh, uh, wait, uh, wait. How can I say this? Let me see if I got this right. Correct. Let me start. Go over. on. Hello, I'm very everyone, curious. And welcome to a this special live episode that we like to call Happy Hour, brought to you by the Geek Buddies. <gasps> Hey! This is the one we uh, do. We've done it once before here with me and Shannon, just hanging out and having some fun and uh, drinking it up here as we end the week on a Friday night. Unfortunately, uh, Vogel cannot join us tonight. He's got other plans, hanging out with his people, hanging out with his crew. I don't know what he's doing. I'm just guessing. And we are going to hold down the fort and have some fun. And uh, Shannon McClung, um, listen to I am the outlaw John Rooker, I'm a host here on the channel. You are? And this is Shannon McClung. I'm a television actor and an animation writer where you can see some of our current work right now every weekend on YouTube with the third season of Strawberry Shortcake, Barry in the Big City. You can see those first two seasons on Netflix. Nice. Yeah, on Netflix. They're available now. So much coming to Netflix. Fucking Brooklyn Nine-Nine's on Netflix. There's so much on Netflix now, man. Everything's There's, there's a really good-looking guy uh, in one season. <laughs> Of that show. Are you I don't in know. that season? They only do no. the first four. Are you in the first four seasons? They've only no, they've only done the first four? Yeah, on first four only on Netflix. Yeah, yeah. Really? It's a slow is rollout, it, bro. Is it season four? Okay, because that was the one. I don't know how many of you all follow me on Instagram, but I put up a video from my honeymoon where I was giving a little tour of our room in Bora Bora, and I just happened, because we had two TVs, I just happened to have pulled up uh, a couple episodes of uh, various television shows that I was on, and one of them was Brooklyn Nine Nine. Yeah, you and uh, Thomas. Uh, no, wait, what's his name? Uh, not Thomas Lennon. I was getting confused with uh, the other guy from uh, Brooklyn Nine Nine. Oh, Joe, it's me and Joe Latrulio. Joe Latrulio. That's it. Yeah. They're both in the states. I remember that. They're both <laughs> in the states. So you know, that's the thing with that situation. So this is happy hour. Um, I just heard a cork pop. That's right. It, it was from this place. Yeah, happy hour. Hello, let's bring it on. That's the, that's the best I could do in the limited amount of time I had. Uh, but yeah, so the show basically is just us hanging out, drinking, uh, with hopefully some of you all having a glass of wine or a glass of beer or a, a, a mixed drink, as I'm about to have a little Knob Creek, a little Diet Coke mixed in. Uh, and we just talk about the stuff that's going on in the world of geekdom. Of course, the Streamlabs and Super Chats are open since we're live. Uh, you know the Streamlabs address. Uh, it's in the chat. I'm gonna. Oh, it's in the uh, description of the video. I'm going to pin it in the chat in just a second. Uh, but we also, you can also send in Super Chats. Any questions you want to ask us tonight, everything's in play at happy hour because you know we get a little, little tipsy, a little buzzed, and all of a sudden the uh, lips start getting a little bit looser, the walls start coming down, and answers to questions that maybe you've always wanted to ask, uh, get answered here on the show within reason. Little Lucy Goosey. Little Lucy Goosey. Yeah, exactly. Little Lucy Goosey for sure. Uh, and we'll do it here uh, on the channel. What, have I got some stain, stains going on here? Have I got some stains on my sweatshirt? No? I mean... Oh, there's something there. Oh. Sorry about that. <laughs> I don't know what that is, man. Who knows? I love this. Literally, I mean, I couldn't, I couldn't see it. I'm going to imagine okay. our audience is going to be looking for it. <laughs> The rest of the podcast. I feel, the like rest of the podcast. I feel like King Kong here. We're about to jump on Godzilla and ride him. Did you see that new clip for Godzilla X Kong, the new empire? He I is, did not. I did not see Kong riding Godzilla. He is riding point. Godzilla. This is kind of scary. I mean, a lot of people are already like offended about what this show is, or what this film is going to be. And now you have Godzilla riding or Kong riding Godzilla. So. You know, another thing, because I because I was watching that, uh, it was a commercial as my wife and I were watching television the other night um, yeah. and showing the Scar King, the bad guy. Oh, yeah. Um, so, you know, it looks like he's got kind of like that almost uh, orangutan kind of like redder fur. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. the top of it almost looks like, it looks like he has male pattern baldness. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, yeah. I mean, I guess that makes sense for a villain. If you're angry about losing your fur on your chrome dome, then. That's, that's where we come from man so you know uh, that's what i've been told in science classes um but <laughs> let's take a look at it right now just to give just to keep catch shannon up on his right here here we go wow jumping on top boy yeah i mean look at this come on now come on, riding riding godzilla all the way into the pen uh that 
I don't know. A lot of people kind of upset about this, uh, but um, oh, so, so uh, what do you what do you think there, Shane? Is well, I mean, throw it on the pi- throw it on the pile of of things <laughs> people are not necessarily jazzed about with this movie. It's the shot of the two of them kind of running towards camera. Yeah. Uh, you know, I I would I would think those uh, illuminated uh, illuminated. I mean, they're not spikes. I know you you all will be able to correct me in the chat. Yeah. Tentacles the were yeah. On, on on Godzilla's back. I. I don't know if I'd necessarily want to touch those. Yeah, uh, I know, right? But maybe that's the maybe that's the hand that he's got the uh, upgraded like a uh, uh, mechanical mechanical glove. <laughs> oh right, yes, yes. Yeah, this you know, I, I feel like that first Godzilla movie. A lot of the a lot of that performance, a, a lot of Brian Cranston's performance, really strengthened that mm-hmm. movie and, and and i think it's kind of uh, uh buyer's remorse that's like boy we really shouldn't have killed that guy off um but those movies have for me at least have kind of gone down like they they kind of keep just getting sillier and sillier yes. and not that we should necessarily take godzilla and kong super serious but yeah. even skull island i mean i enjoy i enjoyed a lot of skull island like yeah, i thought yeah, yeah. that was I thought that was a lot of fun, but they do just kind kind of keep getting sillier and sillier. And I imagine there is 100% an audience for it. I'll totally go see it because watching those two, those two, you know, cinematic icons on the biggest screen that, you know, you can find it. It's, it's going to be an enjoyable enough time. I mean, I don't (laughs) think there's anything that could happen in those movies that I roll my eyes and be like, all right, I'm done. I'm just fascinated that we don't bring back Aaron Taylor Johnson or, or Elizabeth Olsen, because from what I imagine, they're still living in the world of this um, universe. So if we can keep bringing back Rebecca Hall, why can't we bring back um, uh, uh, Aaron Taylor Johnson or Elizabeth Olsen? We had Billy, what, Millie Bobby Brown in two of them, Kyle uh, Chandler, Kyle Chandler. Them, right? Yeah. Uh, so yeah, Brian, like they, Ty, Brian Tyree Henry and Rebecca Hall are the right. are the the holdovers from the last movie, I believe. I don't know if right. there's anyone else. And what happened to Charles Dance? What happened to Charles Dance? Because uh, he was the bad. Like we thought, we saw him at the end of one, and then he was the yeah. bad guy in the next one. And he even gave interviews where he was talking about like I had no idea <laughs> what was happening. I'm just kind of like, where am I standing? What am I saying? Okay, got it. <laughs> Yeah, he was with the head of King Ghidorah, right? Didn't they have the cutoff head there, down there, that they were using for maybe Mecha Godzilla? I, I think don't... that that was the end of the second Godzilla, I think. I... Okay, okay. All King right. of Monsters, was... I, th- yeah. I think. That's what I say. Yeah, they cost too much, Roke. Yeah, maybe they did. Maybe they did. Aaron Taylor, <laughs> Elizabeth, do not come cheap. I'm sure they do not come cheap in that way. Um. All right, Shannon, we got our drinks poured out. What, what do you got there? You got, what, what's your, what's your drink of choice tonight? Man? So this is, this is a Tito's and soda. Um, normally I would, I would grab some sort of, you know, frothy, frothy beer. Yes. I actually tried one earlier in the week. Uh, I only okay. bought one of them. It's called uh bunny, bunny with a chainsaw IPA, <laughs> bunny ball ball, yeah, okay. which was a fantastic, fantastic beer, but also just a really funny can that you have this you know, icon of Easter sporting a chainsaw. I was like, that's, that's really funny. Uh, but tonight this one, this was just a uh, Waterloo blackberry lemonade, sparkling water with uh, some Tito's vodka and a little bit of lime syrup. Also oh, keeping it a chill tonight, like a little, a little on the high end, but not too far on the high end is what you're saying. Well, I mean, the, these are not as filling as, yes. as an IPA would be. Oh, I, um, I think, potentially the potentially the the alcohol content is a little bit higher because i did right. two big shots to go into here um so we'll see what happens if i if i go horizontal at some point we'll know that i may be uh, overserved myself I would, I would like to see that that would be awesome to see you going horizontal um why right, so we're going to get into things and as i said the stream labs and and uh, um super chats are out there or i mean are up for you all to send stuff in and certainly we're going to answer a lot of some questions that uh, come up from you all and uh should I've we only... cheers here johnny should oh we yes cheers? definitely cheers little, che- little cheers to the camera there hey. and haunted autumn we a- i actually said i know this looks like water this is actually this is yeah. actually vodka soda you'll see in about I, an hour you'll see in about I, an hour if i put it up i think maybe you can see maybe you can see the bubbles Oof, that's good oh that's a right mix that's a right mix yeah yeah yeah, you like that. You like that whiskey oh, stuff. I, I, I wish you. I wish I had the I wish I had the gut for it. I wish I had the stomach for it. I, I used to do vodka only. I was a vodka guy. 
but now whiskey is very much the the way I go. But always mixed with Diet Coke, and you can insult my nuts or my dick size if you like, but or my manhood, but like that kind of how I like to roll, son. So I don't have a problem with it, and I have no shame. I like to roll with some dick insults. Yeah, exactly. And, and, and later on, I'll be looking at the Costco insults, see if anything I can get at Costco. So, you know, I, I, got, a, I got a very exciting night plan, for God's sake. Um, but yes, we are hanging out with you all. Uh, love you all. Uh, appreciate you all uh, hanging out with us. Uh, please hope you got a beverage ready to go because we are going to have some fun here. And as I said, send in whatever questions, thoughts, and comments you have. We'll answer them in as we go along uh, through the show. Uh, so let's hit to the first one, uh, Shannon. We got to talk about all the big uh, Superman news that is happening, including this that was announced yesterday by James Gunn on Superman's birthday. Uh, we tried to get Kalinowski tonight, but unfortunately he couldn't hang out with us, couldn't make it to the show tonight because we knew without Mike, he's our, the biggest Superman person on our crew. But uh, Kalinowski is a close second, so we thought we could get him, but unfortunately he's not. But So you're going to have to deal with the two of us talking about this. So this is the new crest or shield, whatever you want to say, logo for the new Superman from da that David Cornsweet will be playing here. Uh, and this was released yesterday, as I said. And also they announced that um, he is, that the title of the film will not be Superman Legacy anymore. It is now Superman, all capital letters. Uh, and as uh, things were breaking this afternoon, we found out that uh, Wendell Pierce, that's right, my man from The Wire, uh, always complaining about McNulty and partnering with McNulty, he will be playing Perry White, um, which kind of follows the legacy of getting these really strong black actors to play these iconic characters in the DC Universe with uh, Jeffrey Wright playing James Gordon and now Wendell Pierce playing Perry White. So. Shannon, your thoughts on all three of these things. Uh, what does the logo, what, what do you think about the um, change from Superman Legacy to Superman? What do you think about the new shield that's very Kingdom Come-esque? And then when uh, Wendell Pierce here getting the uh, nod as Perry White. I mean, that change from Superman Legacy to Superman, I think that makes total sense. Yeah. That this is the, this is the film, right. not, the, not the project, but this right. is the film that is kicking off James Gunn's DC universe. And even yeah. though I think Superman legacy, I think we can kind of um, read into that in terms of what, what the story is going to be. I think right. ultimately as if you're starting off your DC universe, yeah. the first character you should start with is Superman. And the right. fact that it's just called Superman, I think that's a nut. That's nice. That's clean. That's easy. Okay. Um, the shield that, that, you know, that very sharp straight S yeah, with every new iteration of Superman that we have had, at least on the big screens, yeah. starting with Brandon Routh and Superman Returns, going to Henry Cavill with the Snyder movies, um, right. everyone has done their own version of the S. Yeah. And so I, I like that they're not repeating the things that have come in the past, at least on the screen. Right. Um, I, I think that's I think that's a good way to differentiate. I mean, of the Superman costumes, man, I really like that. Cavill, Man of Steel. When I like that darker blue, I like those more muted colors. Yeah. Um, but if you can pull it up one more time, yeah. Uh, that like that blue, that definitely for me at least. I mean, you can only see a little bit of it. Yeah. But that definitely leans into the James Gunness of this uh -huh. is going to be a brighter, brighter Superman. This is going to be a more hopeful Superman, a more optimistic Superman. Yeah. So even though like the, the red and the gold, they, they might seem a little dim. I, I feel like this is going to be Superman is going to be the beacon of hope that he has been envisioned. Not every time in the comics, but right. a lot of times in the comics that this yeah. is, this is the one that we all aspire to um, yeah. really to match Russell Crowe's speech from man of steel. Mm -hmm. Like this is, this is someone for people to follow yeah um in terms of wendell pierce man that guy is going to sound great yelling kent or yeah. lane yeah he he's fantastic i mean you already mentioned the wire he also was on uh you know jack ryan the john krasinski Ooh, amazon right. series right. wendell pierce is a fantastic actor and even though like if you are familiar with his work in the wire you know that he is he, he is a heavy dramatic actor but also yes. he's he's very funny yeah. And I feel like even though you do have someone with some serious dramatic chops, um, I feel like this is going to be this is this is potentially going to be um, a funnier Perry White than we've got in the past. Like, yes. Thinking about uh, Krasinski's interactions, 
Jack Ryan's interactions with with Wendell Pierce's character yeah. in the first season of that Amazon show. I mean, more just more just like, man, are you serious? <laughs> He's he plays um, flustered yeah. very very well, and it's also very very funny. So I think um, adding it like they just have a murderer's row in terms of of cast in oh, yeah. this movie right um so i think he's a i think he is a fantastic addition to the cast he's going to be a great perry white I, I just remember a few weeks ago during a death of a salesman or a few months ago rather during a death of a salesman performance some woman was getting upset at the performance at the play itself and wendell is the one who broke the character broke character stopped the play and addressed the woman and helped her, like essentially guided her out of the theater with the help of the security guys, uh, because he felt she was, you know, affecting the performance of the play. So certainly a guy who is not um a wallflower, not short of opinions if you follow him on social media or read him in interviews, uh, and a guy that's gonna bring, as you said, the kind of that kind of energy, that in boss that boss energy for Perry White. Probably a cigar, maybe, and then also as he did in the wire. But you're right; he's going to find the comedic beats, and this makes it very clear that the place that James Gunn is going with all this casting and all the people that have been involved so far uh, is a much more lighter Superman that still is going to focus on the stakes, the high stakes, but be able to play humor in the smaller hu uh, human moments. Kind of like, you know, we're going to talk about it a little bit later, like in Shogun, the, the first two episodes, there's a lot of very serious shit happening mixed in with some very si funny situational humor in the interactions between the human beings, which I think is a fun thing to see. I think we're going to definitely have elements of that. And certainly, as you said, Wendell Pierce would be perfect for something like that. Yeah, I mean, like, I, I like that you use the word lighter in my head, yeah. how how this Superman is going to come together. And I could certainly be wrong. I mean, yeah. um, but I don't see it as lighter. I see it as brighter. Mm -hmm. This is this is a brighter, brighter. gotcha, yes, brighter yes, yes. Superman. Yes. I feel like I feel like lighter uh, is is speaking more to tone, and I yeah. don't think it's going to be a light, happy go lucky no, Superman. Right. I think he's going to be in he's going to be a brighter, inspirational yeah. Superman. Yeah. Um, yeah, man. I mean, summer summer twenty twenty five uh, can't get here soon enough. Yeah. Uh, did you see the Rachel Brosnahan video with? Um, uh, Nicholas Holt and uh, Corin Sweat. No, I did not see this. They played here. Let me see if I can find it. They played the theme song too, which we might get in trouble for. But I feel like if it's a TikTok video, I don't get in trouble for it. I don't know. In my mind, that's what I think. But it was very cute, like 16 seconds. Yeah, here it is. Let me bring it up for you. And uh, maybe I'll dip out the sound on it uh, every six seconds so I don't get in trouble. But yeah, this is this is it. Here we go. We'll take a look at it. <laughs> so I'm gonna, I gotta turn it the sound down. So I get okay. Oh, fucking that's cool. Oh, ah. there you go. Look at that. <laughs> so cute, so cute, so cute. Uh, love it. Those two were those three uh, in that video. So yeah, I mean, very funny stuff. Certainly giving the vibe that they are happy. And of course, there's a lot of noise around it. Lord knows I've contributed to it in some of my shows, talking about why is James gone on Twitter so much. Why are there so many changes? When are we sure this is going to work? Uh, and, um, you know, it's coming out on July 11th, 2025. Is that the right time? Is that the, are they going to hit that time? Um, and then you have all this stuff from the people around it, from the selfies to this video to other things. Like there's a lot of, seems to be a lot of joy around making this film, Shannon. And you hope that energy comes through. Um, in the final product, because certainly all the Guardians of the Galaxy actors spoke about how much joy they had making all three of those movies, and it showed for the most part in all three of those movies. Oh, I agree. I agree. Um, yeah. it, it it seems like a lot of the folks who have worked, like he works with a lot of the same actors mm -hmm. again and again and again. Mm -hmm. And obviously, people are going to have off days. Not everyone yeah. is going to creatively see eye to eye, right, but right. it seems like when he, when he keys in with someone that he, yeah. he wants to use them. He, he's developing just this, this, this cadre of talent yeah. that he surrounds himself with. And thus far, I mean, I think, I think no guardians film is better than the first guardians. I think right. that one, because it was just 100%. so unexpected we didn't right. know what we were going to get with it and it was so outside of the box for what 
the MCU was at that time. Now people right. can have their can have their criticisms of part two and part three. And it's like, yeah, absolutely. Like, you know, no, it, it's really tough to, when you, when you nail it so perfectly the first time, it is tough to reach those heights, those heights again. Um, but yeah, it seems like everyone is genuinely excited to, yeah. to work with him, to work with him in this capacity. And also, you know, not that, you know, David Zasloff or, you know, the people that are in charge of Warner Brothers. Yeah. <laughs> um, not that, you know, they're anyone's favorite, favorite person right now um but you would hope that they they are trusting him him and peter safran with the keys to the dc kingdom right now like there's a lot there's a lot riding on this they 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 had won at that it did it it um was mixed results yeah and they they looked at what marvel was able to do and they're like we want that and and we can do that like we have just as deep a bench of characters just yeah. to be just a, a, a bench of deep uh deep as deep a bench as of stories i mean yeah. the dc characters to me are just as iconic as those marvel uh, oh, marvel okay. characters and hopefully james gunn and peter safran are able to uh or are able to put that on the screen to the s- success that feige and company had um, definitely with the first three phases and hopefully will the, where they will get back to later yeah. in phase five and phase six. Let's take a look at this is the cast list that we have right now. As you're saying, Corin Sweat, Nicholas Holt, Isabella Merced as Hawkgirl. And just real quick, Isabella Merced did not say that thing that is floating around the internet, that quote about the Marvels. Uh, she did not, or about Madam Webb, rather. She did not make that statement. I see all these anti-woke incels pushing that nonsense. She never said any of that stuff. There's no source for that stuff. She only has spoken about how excited she is to be a part of Superman, now Superman, not Superman Legacy, and uh, playing Hawkgirl. So uh, she made no comments about men and women and Madam Web and all of that. So nonsense. We do have uh, uh, Sarah Sampaio's Eve Tessmacher, Maria Gabriela de Faria as the engineer. Mr. Terrific here, Ed Gathagy's uh, Skylar Gazzando as Jimmy Olsen, Nathan Fillion, of course, as Guy Gardner, Anthony Kerrigan as Metamorpho, Terrence Rosmore's Otis Graves. So what about, the, and Rachel Brosnan as Lois, of course, right on, this was also a, a recent hire, a recent casting here, uh, Terrence Rosmore, Rosemore as Otis Graves. So there's going to be Otis in the movie. He is all, he is black, like, uh, like uh, Wendell Pierce here. And then, but we don't have much of the authority. So what are your two thoughts on this? Do you like the Otis casting? I don't know this actor at all at all and um second do you like the idea uh, what about the authority what are we waiting on with the authority do we think when are we going to get ma pa kent casting what are you what are your thoughts on this as as we see that the castle is not fully fleshed out just yet well i mean it's still a long time i mean it's a it's another what 17 16 months before it comes out i mean there's plenty of time for things to be announced and you know more than likely um you know, as, as announcements slowly do start to pour out, more than likely what happens usually is those annou- those uh, deals are made ahead of time. It's not like yeah. a signature is, is being signed on the contract and immediately they release, they do a press release. That's right. not, it's not always how it happens. Um, yeah. And right now I hope they've announced so much and they're just starting to film. Yeah. Whoever is going to play mom, Pa Kent, that might be a surprise. I mean, yeah. and the authority, like we don't, definitely know that all of the authority are showing up i right. mean we don't know if uh the the formation of the authority is in response to the appearance of superman yeah so yeah. there's a lot of things that could happen i mean just the fact that the engineer is in the, is in the uh film yeah. that doesn't necessarily mean that the team is formed yet right 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 right. could be at the beginnings of it for sure the haunted autumn saying jennifer holland as ma kent cut it out cut it out jennifer holland <laughs> Damn good actress, man. <laughs> Cut it out, dude. Cut it out. Um, one more thing I want to bring up to you here, and I'm going to read you this story because this popped up when we were doing the hot mic earlier today, which I didn't know about this, and Jeff uh, Snyder hipped me to it. If you guys haven't seen the latest episode of the hot mic, it is up uh, for you all to watch or to listen to on the podcast feed. And, of course, our podcast is available wherever you download podcasts. The Geek Body. Just look it up and subscribe. We'd appreciate it. We've got some great new sponsors like BetterHelp and um, uh, oh, God, HelloFresh. They're all Hello part Fresh. of... Yeah, they're all part of our crew here. So if you uh, listen to us on the podcast, we'd love it if you patronized those uh, uh, clients who support our show. So please make sure you go and subscribe to us on the podcast feed and also um, uh, patronize our, the uh, supporters of the show and those companies there. So, uh, But this is something really interesting. A social media user flagged this in an article in the Columbia Business Journal. 
Shannon. This isn't a community college. This is Columbus. Oh, sorry. This is Columbus Business Journal. Sorry. Columbus, Ohio Business Journal, which included the claim that James Gunn's Superman legacy might have a massive budget of $363 million. And the reason they're coming to that coming to that number is the film is expected to receive more than $11 million in tax credit credits. Superman Legacy Projects says it will hire 3,254 Ohio residents. According to this application, the film's total eligible production expenditures for the Ohio Motion Picture Tax Credit were nearly $37 million, or a little more than 10% of the film's total budget of more than 363.8 million. A Reddit user Googled the government website for the Ohio motion picture tax credit, and that includes public information about the production, and it looks like the budget was accurate. Superman Legacy filed a tax credit application for $36,972,289, uh, uh, and the full production budget is $363,845,386. So the Ohio spend represents uh, about 10.16% of the budget. Additionally, 25% of the production is being shot in Ohio, which is what another article pointed out. And they provided all, they've provided all this information due to section 122.85 of the Ohio code. However, the section doesn't define this as the production budget. So what Jeff speculated is it could be the production budget plus the marketing budget that they're all rolling into one. But if it is the budget for the film, let's just deal with that possibility. Does this blow your mind that they would spend $360 million on Superman with really no big theatrically proven stars to lead the way? Would this be a lot of pressure and expectation to put on the film? And would this be an insane amount of expenditure for a movie? Well, I mean, it would be extra <laughs> pressure mm. that's already on this film, as it is the first one in the in the new DC in the James Gunn's DC universe. Um, well, I, I, I want to clarify. So, sorry, Shannon, I want to clarify, guys. I know you're saying he shot it down. That's James Gunn saying that it's not true. It doesn't mean that it isn't true. Please, I can't encourage you guys enough. Stop believing creatives about stuff like this because they don't want stuff to get out that could be negatively seen by them. So, yes. I know he said it's not true. It doesn't mean it isn't true. So I'm sorry, Shannon. Go ahead. Yes. I mean, I am not. I am not a uh, budgetary expert. <laughs> this seems insanely high. <laughs> um, yeah. And uh, again, like you know, they're releasing the information, and you know, part of the thing with the tax credits is yeah. we know we're going to get. We know we're going to get be able to get this much bang for our buck. That's yeah. that's why you know films will shoot in Vancouver. That's why films will shoot uh, in Atlanta because they get a, a little more bang for their buck. Right. Um, I, 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 I don't think this is correct. I think that is just way, way too high. Yeah. Um, and I wouldn't think that they would be rolling a marketing budget into it. Yeah. Yet. I mean, yeah. that it just seems way too far out. I mean, I think they would maybe have an idea, like a rough idea, but I think yeah. until you actually... <laughs> have shot a frame of film um uh, you probably don't know exactly how much you're going to be spending spending on your marketing but 360 million dollars for for what i imagine is going to be a two hour and 15 minute movie that's that seems really high and you know yeah. what? It, it they could 100 percent be spending that yeah. um it just doesn't it it does it sounds a little unrealistic to me but again yeah. i'm not a line producer um, I wouldn't be able to tell you where all that money would be going. Yeah, because I mean, as really. you said, there are no huge movie stars in this. So it's like, yeah. you know, even though they do have a, a, a pretty large ensemble, yeah. uh, I mean, unless everything's going, to, <laughs> everything's going to special effects. Yeah. I don't know. That, it, it, it sounds really high to me. It doesn't. And here's the response from James Gunn. He was asked by this uh, person here, uh, I think on Twitter, Adam underscore Ambrose says, hey, James, this article says your Superman budget is $364 million. True slash false. And, of course, James, who loves to respond on Twitter, said, absolutely not with a laugh emoji. How in the world do they think they know what our budget is? Well, it's in the public. It's in the applications, which is public, legally public in these states that you can take a look at. So, 
I feel like this wasn't people making up documents and photoshopping documents and making up AI through AI documents that have things filled out. So um, James may say absolutely not, but he may be saying absolutely not to the 364 million. It doesn't mean it's not 360. It doesn't mean it's not 355, 350, or 400. It doesn't mean that. It just means 364, absolutely not. He didn't say the budget is way lower. No way. He just said, how do they think they know with the budget? So he answered it and then left it open. And so there's a lot of speculation or a lot of ways you can take how he answered that question. So um, if that's the budget, I think they're insane. Uh, but if it's a good movie, I guess they're going to be fine. But if it isn't the budget, then I mean, I would be curious to know how this stuff got applied for and what the logical reasoning for it was uh, in terms of officially putting that application in for Superman uh, or Superman Legacy or Superman, I guess now. So, yeah, I just have a lot of questions on that one, Chad. It definitely doesn't match what uh, Zaslav and company are famous for. <laughs> yeah, well, so, yeah. So, so again, I mean, I, I mean, I don't know how stuff gets out there in the public record, um, but again, it's it sounds very high for one film. It does, it does. So we'll see. We'll see. Uh, Antonio trying to school me as if I don't know. P John, people make up stuff about Zugo. Yeah, yeah, I know, Antonio. We all know. I'm just saying that it's very possible because we've seen studios spend a lot of money on certain things. I mean, how many reshoots were involved with The Flash? How many reshoots were done with Aquaman 3, but yet they're going to kill Coyote versus Acme? They're going to kill Batgirl. So just because a studio doesn't spend in one area doesn't mean they won't spend in another, right? Disney's cutting budgets. And they just bought a massive game company for a certain amount of money. So you just studios have an interesting way. And it's like you, but the studios are extension of us, right? Like you'll pay $500 for a jersey, but you're not going to pay for an extra taco at the Taco Bell because it's a little too much. Like it's just a matter of when you're using the money and what you're using the money for in a certain moment that makes you spend the money that you would normally, that would make more sense for you to spend in another area, you spend it in this area because you see more value in this area than you do in the other. So it, we're all the same. Studios are just just like us as human beings in that way. So anyway, all right. So <laughs> you can make 10 Batgirls for them. <laughs> yeah, you really could. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right. So let's uh, let's take a quick break uh, here. We're at the 30-minute mark, Shan. And we'll get into some more topics on the other side. Please keep sending in your Streamlabs Super Jets. We'll answer some other uh, stream lab that came through here uh, and we'll be right back right after this do, 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 do. um all right let's see here we got two stream labs that came through two come on guys we've been on for half an hour sending your love stream labs and super chats as we're here for the geek buddies fredtastic says hey buddies March is going ham in the theaters. Hearing the Superman stories where current heroes are killing to maintain justice, is this going in the same direction as, as, as Zack Snyder's Batman v Superman where Bruce thought Superman could be a threat? Thanks. It's a great question, I think, because when you look at the logo, as I said, it's very Kingdom -esque, Kingdom Come-esque, this logo here. If you compare it to the actual Kingdom Come logo, you see it's very close. Uh, this is actually a figure that is out there for people to buy. So you see the crest being very close to what you've got here. Obviously, that's black and red. This is uh, gold and red. Um, so uh, what do you think about this, Shannon? Do you think do you like the do you think it's a little too close to what Zack Snyder was doing? Or do you think that's it's actually a completely different approach here uh, with uh, current heroes are killing to maintain justice, which is very kingdom come esque with Magog and all of that? Yeah, I mean, I, I I don't feel like introducing when you're introducing this movie, when you're introducing yeah. this character, um, I, I think you might have the potential that you might have some heroes who are a little more mm -hmm. uh, brutal than they need to be. Sure, that's sure, sure, that's sure. certainly possible. I don't think it's going to be like, well, Green Lantern just ripped another guy in half and Hot Girl <laughs> smashed a woman's cranium oh, with, no. her, with her nth mace. Um, I think it's going to be more, I think it's going to be more um, pe per perhaps people being afraid of these heroes oh, and yeah. what they can do. Right. And, and Superman having to come in and showing the showing the other heroes that they need to they need to inspire 
right. versus have people be afraid of them. Well, which is what was part of Kingdom Come, right? When he came back trying to teach the younger heroes and the young, the older Justice League teaching the younger heroes to value human life, to value what is going on, even though Wonder Woman wanted to kill every villain that she could find in that Kingdom Come-esque, uh, a Kingdom Come story, you can still borrow elements of that to make sure. it relevant, to make it topical. And as you and as we know, Shannon, uh, James Gunn has been very clear that it's going to have um, a world that is already populated by superheroes. So this has been around for a while now when we're diving into the movie. So very yeah. curious to see how that plays out. Um, let's see. Let, I am two fly cam. What's up? I am two fly cam. He says, let's be serious. DC has a much deeper roster of characters. Batman's verse alone is deeper than Marvel outside of Spider-Man. That being said, what is your most anticipated events for Marvel upcoming fellas? Fantastic four and Thunderbolts seem uninteresting to me. So, Oh, interesting. You, you still think Mar uh, that's happening, but all right. Um, <laughs> You don't be. I'm never going to let it go. I mean, uh, there was actually an article the other day where they had said, like, the Thunderbolts has started filming. And I'm like, oh, boy, much to John's chagrin. Yeah. So they <laughs> All say. that wasted film that's never going to make it to theaters. <laughs> so they say it started filming. Uh, I'll believe it when I actually see people on a set. <laughs> but um, <laughs> but what, 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 what are you looking forward to here, Shannon? We're going into... Uh, phases five and six um you know we've got what have we got here we, we just had uh we got uh daredevil born again coming iron heart agatha uh we just had echo eyes of wakanda um uh there's the friendly neighborhood spider-man project marvel zombies wonder man what if uh season three vision quest possibly um as we as we said fantastic four thunderbolts uh what are you looking forward to I mean, the ones that are interesting to me, definitely Captain America, um, yeah. just because I, I I am a fan of the MCU Captain America. I'm a big fan of Anthony Mackie getting to pick up the shield. Yeah. Um, and, you know, we've heard a lot of stories that things are being reworked. Yes. Um, yes. I hope it turns out well, because I feel like M Malcolm Spellman as a writer, I feel like a lot of the stuff that he tried to do with yeah. Falcon and Winter Soldier, he didn't. Not everything was able to to make it yes. to make it uh, to the screens. Yeah. So I would like to see his sort of uncompromised version of what, what he wants to do of as of Sam Wilson as mm. as Captain America. Right. And you know the reports, yeah, they're not encouraging. That is like the action is completely being reshot. The Serpent right. Society has been removed from the movie. Like again, we don't know if this is true. Like yeah. uh, we won't know for sure until until we sit down in the theater and and the lights go down. Well, um okay. But but I'm a, but I'm a Cap fan. I'm an MCU right. Cap fan and okay. I really I really want that movie to work. And also Fantastic 4. I mean, you know, you, you hear all these yeah. theories that Reed was a student of Hank Pym's mm. and is this Fantastic Four going to take place in the MCU that we currently know, or is it going to yeah. take place in a different universe? Is is Galactus going to win? Is is yeah. if if Galactus is the bad guy, yeah. is he going to successfully eat the planet and the Fantastic Four <laughs> escape? And so you have a you have a very bright, optimistic um, quartet, and then yeah. by the time they make it to our universe, to warn them of what's about of what could be coming that you get to see sort of this arc of like yeah. what happens when everything's taken from you. I mean, and that kind of leads nicely into what secret wars could potentially be. I mean, yes. based, based on the comic, at least, yeah. um, you know, I, I you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm still optimistic about the MCU, even though uh, a lot of, a lot of what we've gotten has kind of over promised and under delivered a little bit. Yeah. Um, I'm still really hopeful. And, and, even like I was bummed that Agatha got got uh, delayed, but mm -hmm. I think an Agatha Harkness show coming out around Halloween. Yeah, come on, man, that's that's a great <laughs> idea. Uh, yeah, I agree with you. Um, I saw some comments on social media. I don't know if this is true or not. I wonder if this is a joke, but um, some people are reporting, including uh, my brother there at Heavy Spoilers. Breaking Avengers Five has now officially been renamed. Avengers the Unknown. Is this a joke? Is this a is this a parody that they're doing? Uh I, I don't know what's true here. Is this true? Uh, is this um is this a Doctor Strange resin uh, re um reference? What is this all about? 
Uh, and I see some other people carrying the story here, like uh, AK Axe Reviews. Avengers 5 is now officially renamed Avengers. So do you think this is a, a messing with us, or do you think this is possibly true uh, that it would be called The Unknown? I, you know what? I have no idea. I yeah. am more of a recent Marvel Comics reader within like the last five years. Yeah. I am unfamiliar with uh, a run called The Unknown. Okay. Um, that's certainly, that doesn't mean anything. There could be oh, very oh, okay. oh, All right, all right. <laughs> I got smoked. Alan Smithy said that's a picture of the failed Willy Wonka live experience. Okay, see, I didn't see all that stuff. So there you go. <laughs> and I've been drinking, so please excuse me. Excuse me. Uh, but yeah, it's called Avengers 5 for now. And then the Avengers, uh, what, Secret Wars. I don't know why you don't go Secret Wars Part 1, Secret Wars Part 2. You know, you did Infinity War Endgame. I don't know why you don't just make it that. I, I'm confused why you don't just call it that. So, yeah. I feel like there's a, there, there, there was a stigma early on with the Part 1, mm. Part 2. And that part, yeah. you're not getting a whole movie. Because um, I feel like they did mm. that first with... Was it Hunger Games or was it Twilight? Yeah. Hunger Games, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. They announced the Part 1 and Part 2 yeah. and... For whatever reason, like, ah, that didn't test well. And that's why they switched Infinity War Part 1, Infinity yeah. War Part 2 to Infinity War and Endgame. Yeah, yeah. Ask Tom Cruise about splitting uh, Dead Reckoning into two parts. See how that's working out. It's not. So it's a good point. <laughs> it's a good point. Um, let's see. Uh, okay. All right, let's see. Okay. So uh, here's a Haunted Unscore Autumn. Firstly, this is for that triumphant rendition of the Superman theme. There you go. I can only do that because I'm only drinking water. <laughs> Also, I know it's not on the docket for tonight, but saw Dune 2 and IMAX tonight. Holy shit, the hype was real. Much love to you both and everyone here. All right, we can do a mini conversation about Dune 2 for now. We're going to spoiler review it possibly Monday night live on this channel at 6 p.m. PT. That's the tentative time we've scheduled for Monday night for the Geek Buddies, including Vogel, to do the review, the spoiler review. So, Shannon, can you give your quick non-spoiler thoughts on Dune Part 2? um since you saw it yesterday yes yes um so as you know we've talked about before yeah. i was not the biggest fan of the first yeah. movie um that i can i can acknowledge something that is really well made yeah really good performances um and something that just doesn't connect with me oh wow. and okay. after watching dune part two um across the board i think dune part two is a very exciting film mm -hmm. I, um I did watch Dune part one again. I watched it in the morning. I broke it up into three parts wow. and I did enjoy it a bit okay. more than I did in the past. Um, I think Dune part two is really, really well made. I think there mm -hmm. are some fantastic performances. Um, but at the end of the day, I'm just not an Arrakis guy. Um, <laughs> as I was watching the movie, I'm like, man, I feel like I've been in here for a week. It's not been a bad week. I just feel like I've been in here a long time. Um, the way I equated it to a buddy at work, I'm like, you know what? This is like going to a Michelin star seafood restaurant. Five star restaurant. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Just like, just, you know, you are getting the freshest ingredients. You are getting the most talented chefs. You are surrounded by just, just a gorgeous restaurant, beautiful plating. Yeah. And I just don't like seafood. <laughs> i mean i think that's that's kind of what it comes down to fair enough man fair enough i get it sand gets in all the places i get it it's not your jam, <laughs> it's not your jam. i totally respect that you know because you're not being mean about them you're not saying i didn't like the movie it's terrible you're just saying i i get what i was supposed to get from this it just emotionally i can't connect to it and and that's understandable that's completely understandable it's one of those I mean, there's a reason a lot of people don't be reading Dune all the time and shit. It's it's a it's a dense book. It's a dense situation. If it you know what? And if I can add one more spoil yeah. or non spoiler thought, excuse yeah, please. me. Uh, and and this will be. I, I'm I'm waiting for the Roca eye roll here. Okay. Um, after I saw Fellowship of the Ring no. in 2001, I'm like, I have to know what happens. And I went and read the next two books. Oh, interesting. When I got out of both Dune films, yeah. I do not feel the need to go read more about what happens <laughs> with with what's going on on arrakis that's so fascinating because i gotta tell you when the film was over i was mad i was like i want more give me more it was two hours and 45 minutes i was very lucky to see it at a press screening with only 10 people in the theater and an imax screen and so when it was done i was like this is great give me more 
So I was upset that there wasn't more when the film ended. So you and I are on completely different opposite uh, <laughs> ends of the spectrum on that one, you know. But hey, your your feeling is your feeling, and I gotta respect that for God's sake. And look, people coming out and loving it. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, I get it. Yeah, this is yeah. this is scratching you where you itch. Yeah, absolutely. it's just not for me. <laughs> no, it's sand. There's a lot of scratching. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Jay West says, "Are you still planning a show with Yuri Lowenthal?" Yeah, at some point, but Yuri's really busy. I mean, Yuri is now blown up. He's gone next level. I could get my brother on a show anytime in the past, but now, I mean, he's going to so many comic cons. Spider Man Two still riding that wave, and so there's a lot that Yuri is doing. There's, I mean, I hear that or oh, the Naruto uh, film is coming here, the the live action version. Will Yuri get a role in that? So there's a lot going on in Yuri Lowenthal's life. But at some point down the road, uh, when Yuri's uh, life calms down a little bit more, I would love to have Yuri come on the channel. We'd shoot the shit and catch up with each other uh, for a couple of hours, which was fun the last time he was on the channel a couple of years ago. So, yeah, definitely at some point, Jay. But thanks for asking. That's my brother in life for sure. Uh, all right. That's all the Streamlabs Super Chats. Just four. Come on, people. We got 215 of you joining us right now. Please send in your love with Streamlabs Super Chats. Any question you want to ask us, it's on the table here as it's happy hour. So, you know, just you you uh, and us just hanging out at the bar. No one else is listening or watching or paying attention. So you have our attention right now as we're going forward. Um, all right, let's move on to another story here, Shannon. A lot happening in the world of entertainment and the world of geekdom that we spoke about discussing here um, on the show and making sure that we uh, got to all the topics that we needed to talk about here on the show so let me uh, let me bring one up for you that i i wonder what you're going to feel about this one because there is a certain somebody who is going to take over the mantle i know you're a comedy guy but there's a certain somebody who's going to take over the mantle of a legendary comedic character and that is liam neeson is taking over for frank drebin in a new naked gun series of all people a man who has spent the last, I don't know, 10 years, 15 years since uh, 2008's taken, 16 years, shooting and killing people at will and at random in numerous situations, is now going to go play one of the most bumbling, inept detectives for humor uh, in the world of film here in Frank Drebin. So do you like this idea? Do you Are you on board with this idea? Certainly he did, a lot of, he did a, that humorous scene in Atlanta in the, uh, one of the most recent seasons, and also had a humorous scene in Dairy Girls, for those of you who watched that on Netflix. So clearly he does have some comedic sensibilities, and when he's hosted on SNL, he's been very funny, but do you think this is the right choice? Do you like this choice, and do you think he'll be successful at it? So he's taking over for Leslie Nielsen as Frank right. Drebin. That's Frank Drebin. Yeah, he's going to be Frank Drebin is what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. Is, is, so is that confirmed he's playing Frank Drebin or he's the lead of the movie? Oh, what, what are you trying to say? Like he's not going to play Frank Drebin? He's going to play well, another Well, that, that it's going to be a different character. That, oh, well, what's the point? I mean, the, the brand is the brand. Yeah. I mean, Naked Gun is Naked Gun. Like, okay. is there, like, you know, you can argue like there's no Naked Gun without Frank Drebin. It's like, well, yeah, but that's Leslie Nielsen. Leslie Nielsen's gone. Well, ABC News says Lieutenant Frank Drebin is back on the case. Liam Neeson will star as the bumbling police detective Drebin in the role made famous by Leslie Nielsen. So, yes, he is okay. going to be playing it. And it's going to be directed by Akiva Schaefer, who did Hot Rod and Pop Star Never Stop Stopping. I think he's one of the members of Lonely Island there with the uh, script from Dan Greger, Doug Mann, and Akiva Schaefer as well, who all collaborated on Chippendale Rescue Rangers. So it seems like there's a lot of good people around this, a lot of good pedigree. So do you think this is the right decision? I think if you are going to try to replace Leslie Nielsen, you need yeah. to do something completely opposite of what Leslie Nielsen is. And I think this is absolutely the best idea. I mean, along with those comedic performances that you mentioned, he had a fantastic episode of Extras, the Ricky Gervais show. Oh, yes! Right. Where he is just, he, he's like, he wants to do improvisational comedy with Ricky Gervais's character. And he is so freaking funny because he's so deadpan. And you can argue that, like, with, with Airplane, with Naked Gun, like, that was Leslie Nielsen's brand of comedy is that he played things very straight right. i think you you take someone like liam neeson who had this renaissance in his career of playing this action guy yeah, yeah. and now you make you put him in this where he is going to take everything so deadly serious but the world around him is going to be so over oh life's too short life's too short excuse oh, me oh yeah, yeah. um uh uh but you you take the world around him you make everything so 
over the top. I mean, yeah. I think this is absolutely the right idea. I, I, mm-hmm. I don't think you could pick a better person for this role than Liam Neeson. Well, and people forget, like Leslie Nielsen, and it's kind of close, Liam Neeson, Leslie Nielsen, he... Um, oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> the, Ill- the Illuminati! But, like, the... the um, Leslie did a lot of drama before he did the po- uh, the police squad stuff. I mean, if you ever see Nuts, he is like the bad guy in Nuts uh, with Barbara Streisand. And so he has played these kind of more serious, more dramatic, more evil characters in his past before he found new life playing this character on Police Squad in the series, the TV series first, and then in the subsequent movies, uh, for God's sake. So, yeah, I love the idea of Liam Neeson playing up this stuff and kind of softening his image that he's had over the last few years. This is a great way to give him yet another renaissance in a way, kind of like what De Niro did, finding his comedic bone in those Meet the Parents movies and other movies where he's trying analyze to analyze this. Movies. Analyze this, yes. So finding a new kind of um, rebirth of yourself as a performer to be appreciated a different way, it could be a lot of fun because, you know, everyone goes now, oh, another Liam Neeson vehicle. This is another way to kind of approach this um, which I think is really fun to see. Oh, yeah. I mean, I imagine there is going to be some sort of joke about Frank Draven being on the case. Like, how many times do we have to see him beat up innocent people? I mean, I, I, how many times has that he done this? Funny. Yeah. 20? 25? You, you, you can't tell the cases apart anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. That could be very interesting. Oh, my God. Would they play around with police brutality in 2025 or whatever? <laughs> Uh, I think maybe could be funny, I guess, if they play it the right way. Um, yeah, what's this? Uh, Haunted Autumn says, uh, love actually Liam Neeson is the best Liam Neeson. <laughs> sure, sure. Uh, oh, don't call me sure. Sad Liam Neeson. Yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> true. Uh, Liam needs Bill Hader as his sidekick. Yeah, who would play the George Kennedy role for Liam Neeson? Um, uh, Shannon, because that was yet another actor who had made him, his bones playing very serious characters and serious villains in westerns with john wayne and certainly in uh cool hand luke there with paul newman he played some harder edge characters throughout his career george kennedy and then a lovable affable dope in the police squad series so who would you get that could be someone who's a badass but then could be funny playing kind of a goofier role i don't know oh that's really i mean i mean bill Hader's always a solid suggestion and he's yeah. definitely proven that he has dramatic chops as well with, right. with barry but i'm trying to think of someone unexpected um ray winstone maybe ray winstone's got the kind of he's got the, you know, he's got the, he's got the barrel shape i think that could really work <laughs> certainly you know re, yesterday doing an interview where he was bashing his uh, work on black widow and how tough that was for him so I mean, Ray Winstow would be an interesting choice. I think. Uh, I mean, but also you can you could cast against type. I mean, instead oh, of like an older older guy, that's a great choice. <laughs> Roy, Roy Wood Jr. would be great. Roy Wood Jr. would be very funny in the role for sure. Uh, no, you don't get Schwartz. He's not going to play a sidekick. That ain't Arnie. Arnie's never been a sidekick, nor will he ever be a sidekick. I mean, and I don't know if you all watch that Schwarzenegger Netflix show, no. but. Like and this this is coming from uh, a a true Schwarzenegger fan. You are. He yeah. he he has to have the right person at the helm to get the best out of him. Yeah, hundred percent. Um, you, he he needs a Cameron. Um, he needs an Ooh. Ivan Reitman. Ivan Reitman. Um, yeah, definitely. It 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 takes it takes a particular director to get the best out of Schwarzenegger, and yeah. I feel like I feel like we may have seen the end <laughs> the end of days. Um. <laughs> So that's a Schwarzenegger movie from about 20 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> that film. Oh, that film. oh, boy, this is getting empty quick. Yeah, it is. Yeah. That film when he's threatening the devil. You think you've had a bad day? Okay. It's the devil. Oh, Fubar. Uh, Haunted Autumn said Fubar. Oh, I yeah. liked it with a frowny face. Well, you don't have to you don't have to put a frowny face. If you liked it, fantastic. I didn't get past the first episode because uh, Schwarzenegger and the the actress from, from Top Gun Maverick who played his daughter. Um yes. I could just tell, like this is this is not going to get better for me. Yeah. Um. And Doug Developer Arnold was great in Jingle All the Way. My God, he like I don't think it's a good. Ago. Yeah. Well, and I don't think it's a good movie, but I think right. the sound bites of him yeah, from sure. that movie. Ah, he maced me. <laughs> Where's your Christmas spirit? I mean, 
<laughs> uh, bring, oh, back, bring back OJ's Norberg. No, 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 no. But Shannon, would you be offended if they had OJ in a scene, like in jail as Nordberg or, or anything like that? Would that be poor taste? All the like all these years later, would it still be poor taste to have OJ? In a police squad movie, if he's like in jail as Norberg or something, I think that would be in poor taste. Okay, yes. all right. Yes, I, I, I don't think there's any wiggle room <laughs> on that. Yeah, and so. yes, J and B is saying twins, kindergarten cop, both sure. directed by Ivan Reitman. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. John, th- thanks for joining us. John Asher said, "Made the chat. Just got out of work. Enjoy the show as always." Thank you, John Ash, for Thanks, Appreciate John. It. John Travolta. No, 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 no. I, I, I like the suggestion, but again. Travolta's an alpha man. He don't play sidekicks. He rarely ever plays sidekicks. It's not his thing. Uh, Sinbad. Oh, you could you drag? Could you blow the dust off Sinbad and get him in to play George Kennedy? I think that could be interesting. You know, Sinbad. It's it's so interesting how Sinbad from you know he he was a stand up. Mm-hmm. He 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 got a lot of exposure from with uh, a different world. The the spinoff yes. of the Cosby Show. Right, right. Um. He he Sinbad's a good actor. He is a good actor. He's a funny like, actor. He he's really funny. Like there there is yeah. a criminally underseen college football movie starring Scott Bakula called Necessary Roughness. Classic, son. Classic. And Sinbad is in it and does such a fantastic job. And he is and, and he is so yes. funny in Jingle All the Way. <laughs> I had no right. idea that we were going to talk about Jingle All the Way. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, necessary roughness right we are here to party yeah i love Sinbad. Sinbad is great. that movie is so good that is the major league of college football movies necessary roughness right absolutely absolutely agree oh. there is so much of that movie that i'm gonna like ah maybe we don't do this today but <laughs> yeah like, right. like maybe right. may, may, maybe the 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 uh the player that uh, specializes in martial arts shouldn't be a white guy <laughs> that's true that's true <laughs> <laughs> but but Ugh. so much like Hector uh, Hector Elizondo and was it Robert Loja? Robert Loja is the assistant coach. Yes, fantastic. Yeah. Jason Bateman. Yep, that, that's when receiver. you can still see like Jason Bateman was always a fantastic actor, even like in a movie like that. Rob Schneider, back when Rob Schneider was wasn't insane, crazy. I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> Larry Miller as the um, as the dean of the as college the was so great. Um, was it was it who who played the the girlfriend? Was it uh, was it Marsha Strassman or was the actress from uh, Honey I Shrunk the Kids? I think it's the actress from Honey I Shrunk the Kids. I think it's from is it from Honey I Shrunk the Kids? Yeah, I because that came is. out in eighty nine. Necessary Roughness didn't come out until ninety three. Ninety two. Is think that she's her? Still in play? Isn't she? Uh, yeah, Harley Jane Kozak. Who? Oh, she was in. Oh, she was Helen in When Harry Met Sally. Singing Surrey with a Fringe on top <laughs> in front of Ira. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that's her. Um, but is she? No, I guess she's not. I thought she was in Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. Yeah, I think it's the same one. She's in Arachnophobia, and she's in Parenthood, playing Rick Moranis' wife. That's why I got it confused. She plays Rick Moranis' wife in Parenthood, that he sings to her in the... In the um, in the classroom, so close to you. Yes, exactly. The Carpenter song. So yeah, so, yeah. Harley <laughs> Jane Kozak was great. Uh, oh, she was in the Amy Fisher story. Well, of course she was. Um, and Larry <laughs> Miller. Who else? Robert Loja, as you said. Fred Thompson. Fred Thompson was in this movie. Late Senator Fred Thompson. Um, <laughs> Kathy Kathy Ireland is the Kathy kicker. Ireland as the I kicker. Yep. Yep, yeah. yep. 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 Um, somebody named Marcus Giamatti. Could that be Paul Giamatti's brother? I don't know. He is the, he was the karate guy. So interesting. Oh, yeah. Paul Giamatti is a, a relative of his. Wow. Well, there you go. So, <laughs> <laughs> he is the older brother of, uh, of Paul Giamatti. So, uh, fascinating, fascinating. Uh, all right. Anyway, I don't want to go on too far. <laughs> I'm getting off. This is all because we said Sinbad's a good actor. Uh, <laughs> I know. I love this movie, Nessay Roughness. You all need to pick it up. I know JTE, friend of the show, JTE is a massive fan of Necessary Roughness. By the way, this was the director's last film. He did the She's Out of Control film with Tony Danza. I remember that one. 
did Man with One Red Shoe, which is one of my favorite Tom Hanks comedies. Tom Hanks movie, yep. Yes. Mr. Mom, one of the great Michael Keaton comedies. Wow. He also did one of my favorite 1970s films starring George Hamilton, a Dracula spoof called Love at First Bite, <laughs> which is great. <laughs> with George Hamilton versus Richard Benjamin. We are brushing the <laughs> dust off this. All right, anyway, let's move on. For fuck's sake. We're going way too far. Yes, Vogel is at Dune 2. Yeah, that's why he's no, not no, he's no, he saw Dune two earlier. He's oh, he's where's he he's now? out. He's out and about with his. Oh, you know, we talk about the. You know, Johnny and I both have better halves. Uh, Mike's yeah. got like forty five better halves. So yes, he, he has a lot of social obligations that he has. <laughs> is to is to. he tweeting it? Is he tweeting? I would. God, I would love it if he's watching us at the bar. That'd be <laughs> hilarious. Um, let's see where, where we are. Oh, let's take a quick break. Uh, we're at another half an hour here, Shan. So we're running through this stuff here as we're having fun with everybody. Thank you so much for joining us. 215 of you joining us right now live on a Friday night. You could be anywhere else. The <laughs> fact that you're hanging out with us, uh, me and Shannon, as we knock a few back and have some fun conversations that go in strange directions. <laughs> we, uh, we appreciate it badly. Please make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit that bell button so you see when we're dropping uh, episodes like this. And also, of course, subscribe to our podcast that's a really big deal over wherever you download podcasts me shannon and vogel dropping our episodes you don't have to look at our pretty faces you can just listen to our pretty voices there on the podcast feeds and very much patronize all the new sponsors that we've gotten here on the geek buddy so let's take a quick break we'll be back with some more stories here right after this do 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 I don't know where we're going. I just I, I grabbed onto the word strange and I'm like, I, well, I like it. I got I like that one. <laughs> <laughs> um let's talk about the Rebecca Ferguson story here, man. Oh, uh, boy. This is the greatest mystery in Hollywood currently, right now. Everyone is obsessed with this Rebecca Ferguson story. She was on a podcast here with uh Josh Smith, and she spoke about how she had been on a set with an actor who, uh, let's just say, dressed her down uh, in a terrible uh, situation here and um, said that, you know, I can't even act. Uh, this is the best you've got. You're, you shouldn't even be on the set. This is what I have to work with. Yelled at her in front of the whole crew. Uh, asked her, you call yourself an actor. Uh, and she said, there was no safety net for me, so no one had my back. I would cry walking off the set and then eventually she found her strength went back on set on the set later said looked at this person and said you can fuck off i'm gonna work towards a tennis ball i never want to see you again of course she couldn't get away with that because this person was number one on the call sheet and shannon all these people were marking themselves as safe like rebecca ferguson <laughs> was a natural disaster coming for them emily blunt uh hugh jackman tom cruise uh, the Rock, Dwayne Johnson, were the first people to run out because the last thing The Rock needs is more bad press. He got ahead <laughs> of it quickly. Uh, and all and uh, a couple of other people, people are speculating this could be Hugh Grant uh, from Florence Foster Jenkins when they worked in that film together, Jake Gyllenhaal with, in Life, um, uh, or Michael Fassbender in The Snowman. So, I, But to me, I go back to the fact that it could be fantasy because she said she's acting opposite a tennis ball. So we know that's usually when you're acting opposite something that's special effects. So, A, what, what did you think of her comments here? And B, what do you think of the the uh, the uh all the amateur sleuths that have popped up in Hollywood trying to figure out who this is that talked down to her? Well, I, I mean, in, in terms of what happened, like, man, that sucks. Mm -hmm. That absolutely sucks that you have uh, a performer with an oversized ego yeah. who is wielding their clout in such a negative, in such a negative way. Yeah, um, yeah. like, I, I don't know how many of our audience, uh, ha has performed, but okay. Yeah. I got to turn my camera off for one second. My wife, okay. my wife is coming in to get me a refill, oh, boy. Um, but, but she said, she's not camera ready. Come in, baby. <laughs> <laughs> she, she was very clear. She did not want to be on camera right now. I oh can my God. What oh, happened to you? Whoa. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Please get me a drink. She looks great from here. Let me tell you, she looks great from here. I just figured they're like not camera ready. Yeah, no, no, no. Um, she might be mad right now. Yeah, you might have. Uh, <laughs> Go ahead, yes. Um, but um, one of the things with performing, and John can can attest yeah, to this, sure. you, you tend to get your best work when you feel safe. 
Yeah. Um, when you when you feel like you're taken care of, because um, performing can be a very um, taxing and emotionally vulnerable thing to do. Yes. Um, like I know a lot of us, you know, we watch TV shows, we watch movies. Doesn't look that hard. And, and sometimes you're right. I mean, sometimes yeah. you watch some things be like, boy, they just kind of slept, walk through that. Or it looks like they are just having a they look like they're having a blast. Sometimes that's the case. But yeah. when you get into those heavier dramas, when you have to go to those darker places, that can be um, that can be a real challenge. Yeah. And when you are in the midst of trying to get to a certain place to have a co-star who has has um more more sway than you do yep. to have them dress you down as john put it in yeah. front of the crew in front yeah. of people yeah. that you are going to be seeing every day for the next 10 11 weeks right that is a shitty shitty thing to do yeah and um not to like i've never had this happen but i've had i've had a co-star treat me real real bad yeah. and john oh. Well, Which, we 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 talked about. Well, no, I'm not gonna say it. Okay, fine. <laughs> um, Rebecca we, was uh, Rebecca was revealing things. Okay, that's fair. That's fair. You don't want to say who it is. Well, yeah, know. just because you never know. I mean, the it's reason true. she didn't bring it up is because, like, well, I don't know if I'm ever gonna work with this person again. That's um, true. Um, but in terms of but in terms of what happened, man, that absolutely sucks. But yeah, I imagine everyone ran to her IMDb. Yes, <laughs> to be like. Who are you talking about? And I feel like now, correct me if I'm wrong here. She she came out afterwards and clarified this was not this was not Hugh Jackman. Not Hugh Jackman. This, this was not Tom Cruise. No Tom Cruise. No. Um. Okay. Let me turn the camera back off because she's <laughs> back with my she's back with my refill. You look great looks, and looks gorgeous. It looks gorgeous. Give me. Give me. Give me. There you go. Thank you, baby. Give me a kiss. I love you. Hi. She's. She said hello. Hello. Um, um, but uh, but yeah, I mean, everyone goes to her IMD, yeah. IMDb to try to figure out. Now, when you're talking about the tennis ball, I don't think that's necessary. I don't think that necessarily means that they were on a special effects set. Okay. A tennis ball is a very common thing to direct lines to, usually on a special effects set. But I mean, they do use them in other places. Right. Um, if, if the actor that you are reading opposite um, is not available for yeah. whatever reason um the thing the thing that i would think it's not life is okay. the interviews that were done in the in during the uh pro uh the promoting of that yeah. film yeah. it was a lot of Jill and hall and ryan reynolds yeah and yeah. they seemed like they were having a great time yeah yeah so that's not cool. to say that jake Hall wasn't suddenly a, a bastard to her on one of those right. days but it just doesn't seem like in such an ensemble, I'm like, I don't feel like this would happen. I could be wrong. Yeah. Um, Hugh Grant, he does have a reputation he of does being a, be cantankerous for sure. Yeah, of being a pretty salty yeah. individual. Um, but in terms of the things that she said, like, you know, is this is this the best you got? I mean, whenever you hear Hugh Grant talk about acting, it always kind of sounds like it's a pain in the ass. Yeah. Me. Yeah. That he has to um, do it at all. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I don't feel like, I don't feel like he gives enough of a shit. Yeah, yeah. Um, to, to publicly embarrass someone like this versus yeah. what he did to Ashley Graham on the red carpet, right. um, which is, right. you know, kind of a grump, grumpy old man type thing. Like, Oh, I threw out a, I threw out a, a, a reference that you didn't get. So yeah. now I'm going to yeah. kind of roll my eyes at you. Yeah. A lot of people are saying it's, it's fast bender. Yeah. Um, from uh, the snowman. Right. And, and I, and I hope that's not the case because uh, I have really? seen several interviews with fast bender before he, you know, went on that ascent to yeah. Hollywood stardom. I mean, we were at a comic con. It was a hall H. Do you remember the Jonah hex panel, Johnny? Yeah. Oh my God. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Cause Whoa. it was, it was Brolin, it was Megan Fox, it was Megan Fassbender. Fox. Yeah. And even there, Fassbender seemed to be a pretty affable guy. Yeah. But again, a movie like The Snowman, which, you know, I've never seen it. I heard it didn't, didn't turn out well. It's horrible. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that didn't turn out well. It's horrible. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, you're 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 trying to get to a certain place and it's just not happening. And it, it certainly is within some people 
maybe you're even the cause that's not happening and you're looking for somebody to blame. Yeah, right. And, and so you she point seemed to, she seemed to be. Oh, sorry, go ahead, that. Johnny. No, no, I'm sorry. She seemed to be she seemed to imply that, Shannon, what you were saying, that like this person couldn't find their motivation in their scenes and was blaming her for it. And so you're right, like some actors can get quite temperamental on set, but we also don't know what was going on with this actor, right? We everyone's always like, you shouldn't treat people like that. And then they're the ones who've like yelled at their family members at inappropriate times or revealed shit or gotten upset at a coworker. It happened. It could have been possible that this actor or actress, because she didn't go say what gender it was, um, might have been having a bad day, might have been going through a divorce. The thing though that I think is interesting to consider in this is that clearly this person didn't make amends. Because Rebecca right. doesn't strike me as a vindictive person. I don't think she'd even tell the story if the person came up to her afterwards and was like, "I ha it, it was terrible of me to say this to you. I apologize profusely. You're an incredible actress. I'm sorry. This was clearly on me. How can I make it up to you? If you want to be mad at me for the rest of the shoot, that's fine. But afterwards, I'd like to make it up to you somehow, take you to dinner, buy you whatever you like, you know, just to say that I'm sorry and I want to support your career. So... It's very simple. There you go. 30 seconds, you can really kind of smooth things over. And clearly, it seems like this person did not do that. Um, but the funniest accusation, and I'll do your thoughts on this, Shannon, is people are now bringing up Jacob Tremblay, that Jacob Tremblay from Dr. Sleep might have uh, might have called, cussed her out and called her out, and people don't know that there's a demon within the sweet, sweet-voiced boy. So uh, <laughs> any possibilities that is Jacob Tremblay? Who uh it? I mean, I feel like at, at that point in Rebecca Ferguson's career, she would have just told Tremblay's mom yeah, or right. whatever adult minder would be yeah. there with him. Be yeah. like, hey, get your shitty kid. <laughs> <laughs> get your shitty kid out of here. Yeah, um, yeah. You know what? Doug Developer actually brought up something nope. fair when it said, wouldn't someone most likely treat Rebecca Ferguson like this if she were more yeah, of true. an unknown? 100%. That's yeah. certainly a possibility. I mean, yeah. again, the the... I can count on one hand how many times a co-star has treated me badly. And that is very much the case. I mean, the person um, was number one on the call sheet. They were the lead. They were the executive producer of a show that had been on, that had been very successful, been on for very for, for several years. Yeah. Um, and this guy, and I'll, I'll say it was a guy. Yeah. Um, what a prick. And it was just someone that had kind of lost the perspective of, of an actor trying to make it they were paid a lot of money and yeah. they started to kind of believe, believe their own bullshit. And when this person, cause it was a show I recurred on, ah, yeah. there you go. If you want to go to Ew. IMDb and see how many shows I recurred Ew. on, you might, be able to, you might be able to figure it out. Um, whenever this person was not on set, it was a better day. And not just for me, but amongst the crew as well. There was just a, uh, there was a lighter feeling in the air when this dude was not there. I'll tell you someone no one's bringing up. And I don't know if I've seen this episode. Well, I've seen this episode, but I don't remember if she had any scenes with this person. And this person also is also it also has a legendary reputation for being cantankerous. Remember, she didn't say it was a film set. She said it was a set, right? Mm -hmm. She was on an episode of Wallander, the Kenneth Branagh series, which is the remake of the, I think, the Swedish series, the original Wallander. I would absolutely believe that in 2008, this is her this is her fourth project that she's on. Don't get me wrong, she was on 122 episodes of Ocean Avenue, whatever that is, and 54 episodes of something called Naya Titer, which is way at the beginning of her career. This is 2008, one episode. I would absolutely believe that Brana could be one of these people who is like, is this what I have to work with? Because Brana has been known to be quite a prickly guy uh, when it comes to acting. And certainly a guy who taught acting, a hard scrabble kid who worked his way up to become the successful Shakespeare actor and director that he is. So I wouldn't put it past it being Brana way back then. What about you? No. Well, because I don't know the Wallander show. Was, oh, okay. he, was he only a performer? No, he was the lead of the show. Well, no, that's what I'm saying. Was oh. he only an actor or did he produce? Did he direct? Oh, yes. He was the producer of the show at this point, the executive producer of the show. And, and I don't was... think it's him. You don't? Okay, okay. Because she talked about the director saying, there's nothing There's nothing I can do. This uh. is number one. I don't think, even, even, it, like, even if he were horrible to her, yeah. Um, which even if you're a producer, the, the, you know, there's no excuse right. for that behavior. Of course, of I course. feel like 
I think she would know the director isn't going to be able to help. Right. In, in right. this situation, right. that this is literally the person who yeah. controls all the power. Yeah, because he is the he was the EP on the show for sure. One of the uh, five EPs that were on the show uh, throughout its existence. But I, I just throw it out there because it's a name I haven't heard from anybody. Uh, but don't forget, I mean, she was also on The White Queen for 10 episodes. And so it might have been an actor like that. Uh, one of these smaller actors who are part of that series uh, who might have had a back and forth with her. Um, and certainly British actors can be quite contentious uh, and cantankerous as well. So you can go through all these uh, and take a look at these. Because she made quite a jump. Like She was doing these kind of smaller things and then, boom, Mission Impossible Rogue Nation. Then she kind of took off from there. So yeah, um, and people forget she was in Hercules just a couple of years before. Maybe it was Ian McShane. Maybe it was Ian McShane like yelling at her. Who knows? That's possible. Is he is he known to be kind of a prickly? prickly I, I mean, he's British and he's got a very strong opinion of himself. I would say <laughs> it's possible. Plus, he's an old school guy who's a veteran who's done a million things. So maybe he felt like she wasn't getting there and he felt. But then again, is Hercules the film you want to get upset about? I don't I know. Kinda, because what? she also said number one on the call sheet. Oh, fair points. That is not Ian McShane. That would be The Rock for sure. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I do find it curious well, that The Rock came out first and was like, hey, I'll uh, beat someone up. We did it. Uh, you know. <laughs> what were you going to say? There? Well, no, I mean, you know, you, you've certainly, you know, you've been on sets. You've worked with, mm. you've worked with folks before. I mean, mm -hmm. I don't, I mean, wh who's the biggest person you've worked? Was it Nicolas Cage or was Probably, it Franco? Yeah, oh, yeah, Nicolas Cage. Biggest person I've ever worked with? Yes, yeah. Nicolas Cage. I would say Nicolas Cage for sure. Yeah, yeah. But, and But I've interviewed Stallone, interviewed Clint Eastwood. You know, I've been in rooms with these way, way heavy hitters. And right. I've, I've never found them to be disrespectful or mean or any way, shape, or form. But but Nicholas was an aloof guy. Nicholas was distant, but yeah. not mean in any way, shape, or form. He's just one of these introverts on a set, you know? And yeah, 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 that, yeah. That was yeah, an intense yeah. film that was way over budget, so I don't think I could blame him for any of his behavior on Wind Talkers. Um, right. Because, I mean, that was a fucked up set on so many, for so many reasons, rather. So, yeah. Yeah, I mean, and again, I feel like I feel like we've talked about this before, but, yeah. you know, Vogel's not here, so I feel free to belabor the point. Do it. Um, but, but there are certainly, like... At, for for a performer at like mine and John's mm. level, when you are you know you know going out to your auditions, you're trying to make your bones. Um, there can be when you get that job, like you are excited, like you are yeah. Oh, totally. Not only is it potentially going to be very like like a financially a great day, but yeah. you're getting to do the thing that you want to do. Yeah. yeah. For a series regular. This is the this is the regular cast that, mm. you know, is could be at a, de definitely at the time doing 20, 22, 24 episodes a year. Um, but uh, for for these folks, it's Tuesday. Yeah, right. Uh, yeah, exactly. I mean, yeah. it's a big day for me. But for them, it's like, man, this is this is day four of a 13 yeah. day shoot. And we've got 10 more episodes to go. And I'm I don't like this. I don't like this showrunner. Yeah. I don't. I don't get along with my co-star. Yeah. You have to provide a little bit of space for people to be people. Yeah. Um, yeah. I was actually having this conversation with a, an old coworker of yours, mm. Jed Alexander, the other oh, day. Oh, I love Jed. Yes. <laughs> just talking about like, yeah, I mean, it's it's a big day for you. For them, it's just another work day. Yeah. And yeah. if if an experience like getting to work with someone that you are a big fan of or that you grew up watching you might have some expectations of how that interaction is going to go and those mm -hmm. might not be those might not be met right and that doesn't mean that this person is a, a bad person yeah. it doesn't mean they're an egomaniac it just means that hey you 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 were there on on a bad day for them right or on a day that they just weren't feeling that social yeah, yeah. and having been number one on the call sheet for a few, for like smaller projects, yeah. I've definitely had people who are background want to come up and chat. And sometimes I'm feeling chatty and sometimes I'm not. Yep. Sometimes I'm like, man, I really got to focus on this thing. I don't have time to have a conversation right now. Um, but it's when people are malicious. Yeah. Um, which I've, again, I've only worked with, I would really only say one person who was kind of malicious. Mm. Uh, I've worked a couple assholes, but one malicious person. Right. Um, it's like, okay, there's no excuse for that because what you're getting to do yeah. 
karmically, you have not earned this. You got <laughs> there are a lot of talented people. You yeah. just happen to be in the right place at the right time. And the, and most of the times, and this is the truth about creatives and about actors, especially like if they're being assholes, it's because they're massively insecure about their position and certainly don't. And, and there's a massive thing about imposter syndrome with actors. And some of the most successful actors have imposter syndrome, which is this fear that they're going to be found out to be a terrible actor. I mean, Daniel Day Lewis has talked about it of all people. Um, so why wouldn't uh, someone who is on a successful CBS series not have a certain amount of attitude from a country, uh, you know, in the lower areas of the globe, uh, have an attitude about people? I don't know. It's because that person probably feels insecure and they maybe don't deserve where they're at and they know it kind of inside of themselves so they take it out on everyone else like everyone else must be as miserable as i am and since i control the set because of my energy and being number one i can't help it now i'm not excusing it or saying it's right i'm just saying there are people like that and so you have to be strong to kind of navigate around that situation um some of you asking me yeah uh uh, uh christian slater very nice guy had nothing but uh, positive interactions with christian slater Adam Beach was also very nice as well. Yeah, I don't, I didn't, I never said he was a shit actor there, Doug. You're putting words in my mouth. I just said he wasn't, he's not one of my favorite actors, is what I would say. I don't think he's that good of an actor for sure, but um, he was very nice on the set of Wind Talker. So um, I don't, I don't have anywhere near the experience Shannon McClung does with these name actors on sets. So for me, it's, it's very limited exposure I had on sets with, uh, with certain actors. So yeah. But I don't know if I had an, any, I don't know if I've ever had any experience like you've had with an actor necessarily, like a name <laughs> actor. So I wouldn't want to, I would hate to have that situation. Oh, it sucks. Yeah, sure. It sucks because yeah. there is nothing you can do. <laughs> yeah, no, really. Like, really nothing you can do. Yeah. Like, at least, James, like, James Franco was producing the series I was on. And so the scenes we had, he was very cool. And I made sure that I was fucking like no perfect on my lines. So that there would be no issue with, oh God, this guy can't get it right, you know. And so he was cool, and and I and I had fun on that set. But um, yeah, but yeah, no, I'm not going to say anything more than that. All right, so <laughs> uh, let's see what more we had on our list of things to talk about, Shannon. I didn't write everything down, so I'm just using our text messages as kind of like my basis for what we want to talk about. Shooting from the hip. Ah, from the hip. Yeah. Did you see the new Tron Aries photo? Uh, is there anything to say about that? Did they, Are you a Tron person? It did not excite you, this first look at Tron I mean, Aries? It's, it's red. <laughs> 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 like, I, wasn't, I wasn't a big fan of the first Tron movie. I think right, I was Tron probably... Legacy. Oh, the first I mean, Tron movie. Right, sorry, yeah. I mean, look, that that photo looks awesome. Like, right? The 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 film, you know, got on. <laughs> um, the first Tron movie, yeah. I mean, I was not probably old enough to understand. Like, yeah. it wasn't Star Wars. Like, that's what I knew right. when I when I watched it. Um, the second one, you could tell like there was a lot of love put into it. Yeah. Um, even if some of it was maybe a little narratively misguided. Yeah. Sure. I would agree with that. Um, and like Garrett Hedlund, like he he's another guy that, you know, they wanted was going to be they wanted to be a movie star and he's yeah. not for yeah. reasons. Yeah. Um, but I mean, visually, like that movie was that movie was stunning. You just mm -hmm. you wanted it to be a little more compelling. Oh, I don't agree. I don't disagree with you. And the stuff and certainly the Uncanny Valley stuff was just took you completely out of the film with the Jeff Go uh, Jeff uh, uh, Bridges stuff. So that's why I'm hoping the technology is now better, all caught up, and the things they are wanting to do with the film um, will match their technical abilities as opposed to overreaching, which is what I felt they were doing in Tron Legacy. But the soundtrack was incredible. Some of those, the light cycle sequences were amazing. The fight sequences were cool. I don't know that... Um, uh no wait what's the actor's name who played the lead in that garrett headland yeah i don't know that garrett headland was the right choice in the end for that character yeah uh, because he's kind of a vanilla actor so i hope that this one is going to have a little more uh sass to it uh and having jared leto in there is going to be interesting as well for all of it but i, I like the look of it you know it, i mean i it, liked garrett headland in tulsa king I, I, oh sure, sure. But I think he's, he's doing a good job there. But he he's not the lead, and it's been about what ten years, twelve yeah, years. I mean, exactly. he's 
had some time to to study and and mm. be around be around folks that are probably a, a little more uh studied yeah yeah fair point like stallone <laughs> yeah uh, <laughs> <come on. laughs> mike gallagher says we cast norberg with jonathan majors too soon oh yeah too soon you can't put jonathan majors jesus <laughs> jesus christ <Mike. laughs> this is not even 10 son uh a friend wants to know if you're watching the bad match uh shannon have you caught up have you watched all four episodes where are you at right now no i watched the first three okay but because i wasn't gonna be on the review of you and vogel <laughs> there wasn't the there wasn't the urgency to watch Fair. the new one is it good uh, yeah i love the new the new one is a lot of fun like it's it's a slower pace episode but certainly there's a lot with omega and crosshair that i think is uh was, was fun to watch because they're dueling philosophies especially with Crosshair in a period of transition from what happened in the end of the second season and then breaking out of that prison. Where is he at now about how he's lived his life? And Omega being very clear about always doing the right thing no matter what. It was an interesting contrast. And that final scene between everybody who's involved in that final scene I thought was stellar. I don't want to ruin it for anybody who hasn't seen the, the episode yet, but the final scene between the, of that episode was fucking great. So, so yeah. are Hunter and Wrecker not in this one? I'm not saying anything. Okay. I'm not All saying right. anything. I'm saying you can watch it and find out. Fair enough. Fair uh, enough. Uh, so what are your favorite actors? J uh, Sam, Worthing uh, Sam Worthington, uh, Charisma Black Hole. I, I, don't, I, I don't know <laughs> if I would say that. It seems a bit harsh. It seems a bit harsh. Uh, I mean, he he's one of those guys that was yeah. poised to be a big star coming off of avatar mm -hmm, um mm -hmm. and it just didn't happen um yeah, yeah, yeah. i i do remember the panel and you i think you would have been there for terminator do you remember this down. johnny yeah, yeah yeah i think so the terminator salvation panel oh, yeah. um oh, avatar yeah. had not come out yet yeah um nice. but sam worthington was there yep and he definitely had this really kind of brooding, intense air. Yep. And at those panels, you want to get your audience excited. Absolutely. And Mick G, for whatever you think about the movie, I don't think the movie was great. Yeah. Um, Mick G was really doing the Lord's work there. Like he <laughs> was trying. It was. And Sam Worthington. He was one of those guys who didn't at the time, and I am yeah. basing this off of a 30 minute panel. Right. He didn't really seem to have a whole lot of appreciation for the opportunities that he had gotten. Yeah, I agree he, with you. He yeah. seemed a little like, well, yeah, this is what we're doing here. Da, 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 da. It's always nice to me when I see someone come out and be really enthusiastic about the project that they just worked on. Yeah. yeah. Um, Andrew Garfield showing up after it was announced he was going to be playing Peter Parker yep. in the reboot. I mean, he just seemed so grateful yeah. for that opportunity. And that's not the vibe I got from Sam Worthington. Now, Sam Worthington's career, like, obviously, this that guy is not hurting. <laughs> he no. was just, he was the lead of the second Avatar film. He's, he's going to show up in uh, Horizon. Like, yeah. People keep working with him for a reason. Like yeah, he yeah, yeah. might he might be a charisma black hole. It's possible. Yeah. Um. But he he can bring the goods. Yeah. Otherwise, people wouldn't hire him. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I mean, that's mainly that was my thing with Sam Worthington is just like there is a um there's a game to the the promoting that you're not great at yeah. and the movies that are not directed by James Cameron, yeah. you don't stand out enough. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, exactly. Um, and I'm not going to say that about Jai Courtney. I see people saying that about Jai Courtney. Jai Courtney was a one. I interviewed him for an hour for the deep cut back when I was working at Collider. He was great. He's a good guy, right? I like Jai. He's a fucking cool guy. And he's a man. Let me tell you something, y'all. He's a fucking man. Okay. He exudes that <laughs> Tom Hardy energy when you're in the room with room with this guy. So, um, yeah. Oh, let's uh, let's move to that. I know we got to jump into a break and just real quick. Did you see the bike riders trailer? Uh, the new trailer that dropped in and I did your thoughts on another Tom Hardy. Interesting accent. A Jody Comer accent. <laughs> uh, some Austin Butler, a bike rider movie. What are your thoughts on this uh, on this trailer here? So I saw the first trailer and I know that this movie was supposed to come out before. And yes. then it was. Yes. The last year. Played. Yes. Um, the fact that they delayed it to 
what was it, June 21st? I yeah. mean, that's a prime, that's a yes. prime summer date. Yeah. Um, I, I saw it last night when I was watching Dune. Oh, cool. A and another really good um Austin Butler performance. Like mm -hmm. again, my feelings about Dune 2 aside, which I mean overall I enjoyed it. Austin Butler was great. Yeah, he was. Um and this, he looks really great. I mean, it's really funny how you said a, another interesting accent. I feel like this is the accent Tom Hardy da, did for the drop. <laughs> he does it for Venom. Yeah, good point. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. And, and it's a good accent. I mean, he has yeah. this thing that this, when he plays American blue collar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, I get, his voice gets a little high. Like, this, this guy, like, goo goo gaga. They're, they're um, afraid of us. Yeah. But he, but he's really good. I mean, yeah. and even though his voice is maybe a little funny sounding yeah, in, yeah, in yeah. this, in, in those performances, that guy's still scary as hell. Yeah. I said, I said to Jeff this afternoon, I said, he's the William Shatner of accents in that it shouldn't work what he's doing at all. <laughs> you should ridicule the fuck out of him for these accents, but God damn it. It seems so bad. Like it walks that line between character and real caricature and reality that you're like, yeah, but he's such a cool energy that I don't have a problem with it, you know. And yeah. so when you're watching it, he slides into that. Hey, we ain't gotta go anywhere. This kid of us, you know, you wouldn't leak kid. You know, you're just like, mm. so what? What about the bar? Burn it down. Burn it down. <laughs> <laughs> I think what his where he succeeds mm. with that accent is where Gosling didn't. In yeah, oh, what? good point. Yeah, that's actually a good point. Uh, and also Comer's accent, which she's uh, she she's like Kate Winslet with that American accent. You you can hear the uh, Liverpoolian accent bursting through on the edges of her lines, man. It, it's <laughs> it's all right there when she does American accents. She can do accents, obviously, in Killing Eve, accents for every other thing. But whenever she does the American straight English accent, it's not it's not good. So <laughs> that's what I'll say. That's what I'll say on that. <laughs> uh, all right, let's take a quick break and we'll jump into some more stuff, finish up the show, and get into your final stream lab super chats. If you guys haven't sent them in, you should send them in now uh, as we're going to wrap up the show here uh, after we come back here from the break and uh, talk a few more subjects after this. Do, 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 um, let's see what else have I got here? Uh, yeah, I mark safe. Uh, let's see. Any thoughts on Jurassic League that you want to get out there, Shannon? Is that a weird idea that James Gunn is doing Jurassic League? Any thoughts on that? I think when you have so many irons in the fire, <laughs> is this one that needs to be stoked? Um, that's that's my that's my my thought, yeah. but. You know, I thought that League of Super Pets movie, like that was one of those when it was announced. I'm like, why? Yeah, it's yeah, actually yeah. a pretty cute movie. It is so, a good movie. Yeah. If it comes out and it works, but I mean, two gun statements that everything DC going forward, and maybe I'm misquoting him here, everything's connected. It's like, eh, maybe, maybe let's get our feet underneath this before yeah, we start right. bringing in exactly. dinosaur yeah, versions of the more. DC heroes. That's a fair point. Uh, let me ask you about this story. We did we referenced it a little bit earlier. Um, Ray Winstone here, um, who's he talking about working on Black Widow as the villainous Drake off. Um, and the actor spilling the beans on how so crushing it was. This is coming to us from Radio Times. He was talking about how so crushing the Marvel reshoots can be. He said it was fine shooting the film until you have to do the reshoots. Then you find out that a few producers have come down and your performance is too much, it's too strong. That's the way Marvel works. It can be soul destroying because you feel like you're doing great work. Now, um, he also said sometimes you take a project, uh, talking to the Guardian, sometimes you just take a project because you need the money, not because you're super passionate about the script. You go have fun for six weeks, see how it turns out. If it turns out great, it's a plus. If it doesn't, it doesn't. But you've had a great six weeks. You do films you don't want to do, but you've got to do them because you haven't worked in a little while and you've got to pay the rent. So uh, what are your thoughts on this, on his comments here about doing the reshoots with Black Widow uh, and the fact that he thought he was doing great work in a Black Widow movie? What, what are your thoughts on this? Well, look, I mean, I think Marvel films, you can have people doing great work in those movies. Okay. I mean, RDJ has gone on record. He's like, look, I think some of the best work in my career is in those Marvel films, but yeah, we'll it's be. not necessarily being recognized because right. they're Marvel films. And 
anyone who goes along that 22, 23 film journey yeah. of the first three phases would agree. Like Tony Stark, RDJ's Tony Stark has an incredible arc. I agree. Yeah. Um, 100%. And the gravitas of that performance is what launched the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Yeah. Now, to Ray Winstone's point, um, it, it's interesting because generally I feel like when they go back in and do reshoots, it has less to do with an individual performance mm, mm. and more to do with how the film is turning out and That's how fair. it's supposed to connect to yeah. the various other projects that are going to be following it. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, you know, the third act of Black Widow, I think most people would agree, it's not the strongest, but sure, sure. I actually think Black Widow's a pretty good movie. I, I, mean, I agree with you. I think it is a good movie. I think you've got a solid supporting cast. I yeah. think the way that Scarlett Johansson, Florence Pugh, David Harbour, and Rachel Weiss, Rachel uh, Weiss, Weiss yeah. come together, I think this is this is a really, really fun movie, and especially for when it came out. Like yeah. that's when we were just getting back to the movie. It's like, God, this feels familiar. This is a lot of fun. The third act, that the big third act set piece, that yeah. you know, the the fortress flying in the sky. There were some things in the scene between Winstone and Johansson that didn't quite make sense. Yeah. Like when Winstone kind of was about to give her a backhand, and it's like that kind of came out of nowhere. Yeah. Um, could that performance had been stronger? Sure. I mean, and maybe what he did previously, maybe it was, maybe yeah. it was stronger. Yeah. Um, but I can see the point of view from an you know, from an actor's standpoint of man, I just poured my heart into this mm -hmm. even though is this what is this is this what is fulfilling me creatively right, right. not necessarily but i got to pay the rent but while i'm here i'm going to do the best damn work that i can do and yeah. then to have someone come down and be like hey all that stuff that you did we don't want any of that right try this instead you're yeah and it's probably it's not the main producers that are coming down and probably saying that stuff right i mean ray is what ray is 67 years old this guy's a veteran of the business and probably 65 64 when he was shooting black widow so you know having some 30 year old executives come down and producers come down and be like ah it's too much too little you know having done voiceover work being in the on the other side of the booth and watching 10 fucking representatives of the company with their laptops open doling out instructions to you randomly as you're doing a voiceover it is super intimidating and frustrating because you're like you want to do it? Get in the fucking booth and do it, for God's sake, some of these directions you're giving me. But that's that's the game. And so you've put yourself in that position. So I imagine Ray was like, I've been doing these fucking for a long time. And so he was just like, fuck you guys. So <laughs> I'm sure it got to him at some point. So I don't I don't fault him for his uh, feelings on that situation, for sure. Yeah, um, and look, I mean, Ray, Win Ray Winstone is a, is a classically trained English actor. English actor <laughs> and the process of that type of acting kind of runs. It, it's a bit of an antithesis to how yeah. a, a big Hollywood franchise movie is made. Yeah, but yeah, at yeah. the end of the day, you were hired to do a job. Yeah, that's true. This, this is part of your job. Like, sorry that, um, sorry that your creative soul is not being fed. Yeah. But you cash the check. <laughs> this is how it is. And as an actor, man, sure. <sighs> Um, all right, let's get into something you suggested, Shannon. Um, things we're watching right now as we get close to wrapping up the show. I certainly want to lead with this. Uh, Shogun is out there for you all to enjoy on FX. The first two episodes are out. Third episode drops Monday. If you guys haven't seen the first two episodes of the show, I cannot, 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 cannot encourage you enough to see the first two episodes. My Cinephiles co-host and I, Steve Morris, we did a review that's on the channel right now, a spoiler review of the first two episodes. Steve is very steeped in the James Clavell knowledge uh, and certainly the knowledge of the book and uh, having seen the 1980 series with Richard Chamberlain and a young John Rhys Davies uh, and Toshiro Mifune, the classic actor there who's been in a number of Kur Kurosawa films. Um, it was great to have the conversation about the first two episodes. So if you guys haven't watched that, you definitely should, our review. But these two episodes were incredible. You texted us today, uh, our group text, group text and said how much you enjoyed the episode. So what did you think of these first two episodes of Shogun? 
So I've not seen the second one yet. Oh, okay, okay. I, I, I just the watched one? the first one. Yeah. Um, so yeah, uh, I, I had to charge my car this morning, and inside my car there's a there's a theater, there's a there's a viewing um, app that you can mm. watch as the car charges. And it was like, am I either going to watch the the Bad Batch episode four, or, or, or am I going to start Shogun? And I'm like, well, if I watch Bad Batch, I'm actually going to have time left over. Let me start Shogun. Yeah. And again, I lived in Osaka, Japan for two years. Yeah. I have visited the Osaka castle that they talk about. <laughs> this show, again, I have no knowledge of those books. Yeah. I don't know ne anything about them. Neither do I. Yeah. Um, this show seems to have been made based off of the first episode with such an incredible amount of care. Mm -hmm. um, like you can tell, like they really want to get this right. Yeah. And as I was watching it, um, you know, I'm hearing words that mm. I recognize. I haven't, sp I haven't had to sp speak Japanese and, 20 years yeah, yeah um yeah. and i and i was never fluent i could always kind of just get by um yeah. mainly because japanese people are really really helpful <laughs> um, with with dumb foreigners who don't speak their language despite the fact that they live there um guy jeans yeah hey, hey guy jeans yeah. <laughs> um but watching that show i'm like god this is so well put together and for for any folks like i, I understand like watching a foreign film can be a little intimidating. Mm. Um, this is foreign film adjacent because mm. half of this show, maybe more than half, is in Japanese and it is yeah. subtitled. And it does not take you long to get going onto what 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 is happening. Yeah. Um, again, it is so well done. Um, uh, Hiroyuki Sonata yeah. is so good. And this is a guy that is familiar to American audiences. I mean, he has popped up in some very, very big movies. Sure. Um, I just thought it was so, so well done. Um, my wife is actually, she just sent me a text. She's, she's going to go meet a friend. So I'm like, Ooh, maybe it's time to watch Ooh. the second episode of Shogun nice. after, after we, lo after we log off here. But sure. yeah, I mean, just seemed like there was just so much care in making this and yeah, it's just a really, really compelling story thus far. Yeah, I agree. And Cosmo Jarvis, I think is doing a fantastic job playing a version of Tom Hardy in this series, which I think I like as well. And, and Anna Sawai, I think, I think Anna Sawai is Mariko and you'll see in the second episode, Shannon, there's much more with her in the second episode. She is fantastic. And that uh, one kind of scheming, uh, Lord or Lieutenant that's underneath, uh, uh Hiroyuki Sonata's character. He is going to be a lot of fun. Uh, Yobishige, I think his name is. He's a lot of fun. Ishido is an interesting uh, actor playing that character as well, going toe to toe with Hiroyuki uh, Sonata. And so, to me, there's a lot here to enjoy. And that second episode is a is a quieter episode, so it's much more about the political intrigue that's going on here. Uh, and that father, Father Martin, the Portuguese priest, he becomes a bigger part of the second episode as well. So it's fun to see how this all plays out. So I'm very excited. This is one of those things where I'm super jealous that I don't have a connection with FX to get the episodes ahead of time because I would love to blaze through this series multiple times because of how much I enjoy uh, this uh, this story and how much I enjoy this time period. And you know, I'm a Japanophile, so I love Japanese stuff. Uh, in terms of uh, in terms of uh, content, uh, films and TV shows. So, yeah, I'm looking to the, forward to this for sure. Uh, what are you uh, watching, uh, my friend? Uh, what, what what is on your radar that you want to talk about here on the show? So, my wife and I are watching. Um, what is it Death and Other Details? Oh yeah, how far have you gotten, uh, Mandy? Pate we're we're all caught up. Okay, so you're in episode eight. You're in episode eight. Yeah, is that what it is? Yeah, 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 yeah. And it is, you know, it's it's um, off brand Knives Out. It's fun. I mean, it's fun. Yeah. Not that it is, it's fun. It is very much a it has a uh network television mm -hmm. vibe, 100%. but they're allowed to cuss and show some nudity. <laughs> I um yeah. I love Mandy Patinkin. The accent is kind of driving me a little crazy. <laughs> uh because his normal voice is so beautiful. <laughs> it's like dad, just just give us just give us the normal voice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um we're also watching Feud, um, Capote versus the Swan. Is that worth? Is, I haven't started that. Is that worth it? The performances are all fantastic. The story is being laid out in kind of an unconventional way. Okay, it's it's a little out of order, but um, Tom Hollander as Truman Capote 
is dynamite. Right, right. Um, I, I, for me, the standouts are Tom Hollander and Callista Flockhart. And Callista oh, wow. Flockhart's not in it as much, um, but okay. they're both great. Everyone in the show is great. Na Naomi Watts, uh, 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 Chloe Sevigny, Diane yep. Lane, Demi Moore. Like, they're all great. Molly Ringwald. But, yeah. Molly Ringwald, yep. Um, th but the standouts are definitely Tom Hollander and for me personally, uh, Callista Flockhart. But the yeah. thing that um, I am all caught up on right now is Masters of the Air on yeah. Apple. Yeah. So this is sort of the third entry in the uh, Tom Hanks, Steven Spielberg, uh, uh, World War II, uh, World War II series. The first mm. being Band of Brothers, the second being The Pacific. The third being Masters of the Air. The first yeah. two were on HBO. This one is on Apple Plus. Um, this show is just so, I mean, it is very much, it's like, I don't want it to be insulting to say like, it's Band of Brothers with planes. Mm. But if you enjoyed Band of Brothers, this is this is what that show, this is what the show is. Mm. And it is, you know, you always hear about, uh, the greatest generation yeah, yeah. Be, being the folks from, you know, the 1940s that had, that had to fight in the second mm -hmm. world war. And this show is so well done because it really presents um, what those guys had to go through kind of warts and all. And that mm. these are not perfect guys. Right. A, lo a lot of these are very, 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 very young guys um, and very immature guys. Yeah. And they were, they were put in a situation where, kind of an unwinnable situation mm. as people and the things that they have to do to, to deal with their, their day-to-day -day life. Yeah. Um, Austin Butler plays is one of the leads. Mm -hmm. He is fantastic. I have to think this is one of the projects he did right after, uh, right after Elvis. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> because this is a pilot that sure sounds a lot like Elvis. <laughs> um, but just, it, I want to save people, man. Yeah, <laughs> but but it works. Um, Callum Turner, who is another English actor Ooh, playing yes. an American, um, he he's really he's really the lead. I feel yeah, and he's great. Barry Keegan is in it as well. Yeah. I just man, I, I I'm really really enjoying it. I can see folks in the chat are not agreeing with me. <laughs> That's all right. Um, but the but the yeah. they do present um a different not a different version, but, but they're, but they're showing things that maybe the first two series didn't touch on oh, okay. for me at least. Right. Um, and really the third episode of that show for folks that are kind of checking out in which, you know, I get it. The first, the establishing episodes, it, it, it takes a little, it, it, it takes some getting, you got to get through it. Yeah. Um, if you can get to the third episode, like okay. it is very, very intense, very stressful. I super enjoy it. Okay, fair enough. And I haven't started it yet, I, other than the first episode. I haven't gone forward past the first episode, so I certainly need to watch it. How many episodes are left? Is it already finished, or does it have a few more? I think we are six in. Oh, okay. I'm, so just I, I, I might be wrong. Okay. I'm, I'm pulling it up on IMDb right now. Maybe that'll be um, my Sunday catching up on this show. Um, part seven came out today. So okay. yes, there are three episodes left. All right, so I've got time to catch up. Maybe we'll do, if you're up for it, maybe we'll do a whole series review at the end of it when it drops the finale. That could be a lot of fun if I catch up. I just finished blazing through the Patriots Dynasty, one that's on Apple TV+. Plus. Oh. Fucking phenomenal. I hate the Patriots, but it's a hell of a watch if you're a football fan. And if you're a human being soap opera fan, there is a lot here with Belichick and Kraft and Brady and all of that. So that's a that's a cool little show that's going. So on. when is it? When is it? It's set from the beginning when they won the first Super Bowl, and I just finished. I'm I just finished the Spygate episode, where and we're seeing Matt Castle come in after Tom Brady's been injured, and now there's people questioning whether Tom Brady is a system quarterback or and uh, not that great. Kind of like what you hear about Brock Purdy now people saying about uh, about Tom Brady. So very interesting stuff. So this is about him coming back now to reclaim his throne and they go on this run. And But apparently the Aaron Hernandez episode, which is I think the next one after I'm done with the current one, uh, is the really um, uh, emotional one. So I'm, I'm looking okay. forward to seeing that one. So 
we will see with that. Um, is that all I'm watching? Yeah, I think besides Amazing Race and Abbott Elementary is back, it's a lot of fun. Curb is back. Oh, Richard Lewis. We should give our thoughts on Richard Lewis uh. passing away, 76 years old. Um, longtime friend of Larry David since they were 13 years old. They met in a summer camp. They were born in the same hospital three days apart, um, but didn't meet till they were in that summer camp. And they were lifelong friends and brothers. So uh, a very sad loss with Richard Lewis. Uh, Larry David said, uh, you know, I used to get mad at him. I used to, uh, you know, almost to tears. Uh, but he made me sob the other day. And that's something I'll never forgive him for, which I think was a very sweet tribute from that emotionally stunted person. So your thoughts overall on the loss of, of Richard Lewis, man. I mean, you know, he was one of those guys that, I mean, I remember him from like the late 80s or early mm. 90s, being, you know, being on network. Yeah. His stand-ups were great. Yeah. Being on being on network TV. Um, but it was so interesting watching him because he was one of the folks, I think when Curb came out, which granted it was always an HBO show. And it was yes. Before, was it before The Sopranos or was it during The Sopranos? Well, it's been going on for like 20 years. So I would say it's probably during The Sopranos, yeah. But it was before the HBO launch of like, this, is, this isn't this is TV, this is yeah. HBO. This is where like it became the place to go for, you know, the, the best thing, the best storytelling you right. were going to see on television. Right. right. Um, you know, Richard Lewis was one of the guys that sort of added legitimacy to that show because yeah, 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 Larry yeah. David, prior to Curb, People might know who he was in that he was the co-creator of Seinfeld who left after what season yeah, season yeah. six. Um, but the thing with Richard Lewis, at least just in terms of curb, was watching how he aged. Yeah. Um, like when I think about Larry David from the first two seasons of Curb Enthusiasm, there's no difference. I mean, yeah. he has always been, he's yeah. always spoke the same, he's always moved the same. Um, you go back and watch it now and there's less gray hair. There's a, oh, there's sure. a little, there's a little bit of, you know, black in there. Yeah. Um, but Richard Lewis, like he, you really saw him age. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and granted he, he, he lived the life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but he was always so funny Yeah. and such a great, he's like, I would never say he was a foil to Larry David, but he was a great companion to yeah. Larry David on that show. Sometimes and, hating him, sometimes be, being his friend, sometimes taking his advice, sometimes hating his advice. Yeah, always around uh, multiple uh, 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 multiple angles to their relationship, so to speak. Yeah, yeah. Um, and he's one of those guys. I mean, it's it's. I mean, granted, this is the last season, but yeah. it's like Bob Einstein now Richard Lewis, oh, like yeah. like those those curb mainstays, like they are. They're getting up there in the years, yeah, and and yeah. and this is what happens: is uh, performers, directors, personalities like people that we grow up with, that we fall yeah. in love with, that sort of form our experiences as as, as people. Yeah. Um, yeah, they get older, and and they start to pass away. And mm -hmm. Richard Lewis is definitely one of those folks that um, always so so funny. All same hairdo, didn't matter the color, yeah. same hairdo for <laughs> forty years, um, but. Love that curb happened for him. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. I feel like that's how he stayed around. Yep, well, it gave him another a second life, so to speak, career wise. And I'm sure Larry was very happy to have him be that part. And you're right about that because I mean, seeing Susie Essman this season, she looks old. It's tough to watch that with Susie. Susie was such a energetic, insane, whirling dervish and Tasmanian devil through so many seasons. But you can tell she slowed down a little bit. Jeff Garland's slower now. Um, so you've got those uh, certain characters on the show or certain actors on the show that certainly you can see. Even J.B. Smoove is getting a little old, you can see it in certain moments. I know Black <laughs> don't crack, but it does age. So you see in certain things as well how he's doing it. But yeah. Yeah, I wonder if that mustache is all natural. I yeah, exactly. He got a little, he got a little just for men. And <laughs> all right. I mean, please. But, but you know, but Richard was always great. And yeah, I, I, I was an 80s kid who loved stand-ups. Stephen Wright, Richard Lewis. There were so many great stand-ups from back time that you saw them transition into Louis Anderson. You saw them transition into stand up or into, sorry, into sitcoms and then into movies. And certainly Richard Lewis was one of those ones that I was very happy to see pop up in, in um, curb. So sad to see him go for sure. Um, but we wish him well on his journey, wherever he's going. So um, let's see. Haunted underscore Adam says, uh, was that closing time by semi-sonic LOL? Were you doing closing time? Yeah, it was, nice. it was, it's a good, uh, it's a good song and good music video. 
Um, let's see if we got any. Okay. Um, Anthony B says, John, are you going to review the back half of the crown season six? I thought the finale was a beautiful send off to the late queen. Unfortunately not Anthony. I mean, the last review crawled past a thousand views and for my channel, I have to be a little bit mercenary now. It doesn't mean I'm always going to get it right, but I have to be mercenary in the things that I review. And Laura didn't, Laura Kelly, who I've reviewed the crown with for the last three seasons, didn't seem all that jazzed with coming back to do uh, the review of the last six episodes. She's been really busy with stuff going on in her life as well. So it just didn't seem like it was something we were going to do. But yes, I loved the last season of The Crown from top to bottom. Really enjoyed where it went. And that finale with the queen was fantastic. All three of the queens or all three of the actresses coming together to have these conversations about the queen at different points of her life, I thought were, fan including the younger actors who played younger versions of the queen uh, when they when she was a teenager and a young girl, I thought having all of them be a part of it in that final episode was really great. So yes, 100% um, in, in love with it. And you know what? I, I, I'm a big Princess Kate fan, so sending out her um, thoughts of comfort to her as she's dealing with the surgery and the after effects of that surgery. I hope she's okay. And of course, uh, King Charles having the cancer, so sending out positive thoughts to him uh, there. Regardless of what your feelings are about the whole situation with Meghan Markle. I still think they deserve some kind of grace. Uh, Doug developer says, loving the film set discussion, guys. I feel like, you know, an actor is pleasant to work with. If he or she worked with many directors multiple times, Denzel worked with mul worked multiple times with Spike and Tony Scott, a different, a difficult actor like Val Kilmer never did. Well, I mean, look, watch the Val documentary, Doug, and see if you come out with a different point of view on Val. But you're not wrong. Certainly a lot of people have spoken about how difficult Val's been on sets. And of course, he's also suffering through the throat cancer that he's had, he has. So I won't speak ill of Val. I love Val. So I, I can't say anything negative. You're probably right, but I can't say anything negative about Val. Uh, what are your thoughts on this, Shane? Um, I mean, he, he had a reputation. He yes. had a reputation for a reason. Yeah. Um, right. a, a gentleman that I worked with at Universal, you know, oh. 10 years ago, he... Yeah was one of two faces goons on Batman forever. Oh, okay. And he talked about not so much that Val, well, I mean, I, the, the, Val, this was Val being difficult, but yeah. the aloofness of Val mm -hmm. Kilmer. Mm -hmm. Like uh, he, he talked about, he had some um, prosthetic uh, like piercings yeah. in his eyebrow. Like, you know, this guy doesn't have a pierced eyebrow, but they put it in along with like, you know, the, Two Face ski mask that he was wearing, and he was talking about how Val Kilmer was looking. He's like, "Man, that is amazing what they can do!" Like, really, just kind of like taking in the makeup mm. and Joel Schumacher trying to give him direction, and Val Kilmer just completely ignoring him and then walking away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which you know is is that conducive to a good set? No, not yeah. really. Right, right. <laughs> um. Do I think he was like a, a again, kind of a vindictive a hole? Not from the stories that yeah. I've been told. Yeah. yeah, that's not to say that it didn't happen. I mean, right. I think the Island of Dr. Moreau. Oh. Um, you know, there's a documentary out about the making of that. Yeah. <laughs> um, and it doesn't seem like he's fully, you know, he he he's the the, the culprit of why right. things went south on that. But but no, I agree with you, John. Like Val, I would kind of. Again, probably from nostalgia, I would I would give him a little bit of grace. Um, but yeah, I mean, folks that work with the same people again and again and again and again, um, they can't all be bad. Yeah. Right. If, or exactly. rather, they can't be all bad. Yeah. Yeah. Plus that Val Kilmer scene with Tom Cruise and Top Gun Maverick. Oh, fuck, man. Every time. That's in the crybank. That is going to be in the crybank forever. Yeah, that's just a <laughs> fantastic scene for the uh, between those guys. The the hug that they have, mm. um, to me that is not Maverick and Iceman hugging. That's Tom Cruise and Val Kilmer hugging, hugging it out with the drama they had way yeah. back when, which was detailed in a number of documentaries uh, about their issues. Yeah, well, because they were young, up and coming actors at the time. Yeah. yeah, you watch that hug versus the hug that Maverick gives Rooster at the end. It's like. That's a real hug. Yeah, yeah. Fair point, dude. Fair point. Fuck, I'm gonna go put the scene on again. Um, <laughs> all right, well, let's wrap it up, Shane. I mean, we've been going for two hours. We gotta go. You got a lady to come back to. I've got a lady to go back to, or you've got a show got episode two to watch. So we gotta, we gotta, we gotta be done. Thank you all so much for joining us. We had well over 200 of you for almost the entire show. I can't believe you guys want to hang with us, hang out with us as we're drinking and shooting the shit. So it means a lot that you would take time out on this Friday evening, at least for us where we're at 
to hang out with us and have some fun letting us shoot the shit and going on tangents uh, all over the place. And, have <laughs> fun. and a big shout out to my brother, Shannon McClung, who was very grace, uh, graceful to take the time, or gracious rather, to take the time tonight to hang out for a couple hours. Uh, Shannon, what do we have to tell the people here about the Geek Buddies? Okay, we'll see if I get Let's do it! it. <laughs> oh, okay, hold on. <laughs> this is why you don't drink. It's up on the screen! Come on! <laughs> if you like to follow us on social... <laughs> <laughs> there it is, yo! Hold on, hold on. Whoa! If you'd like to follow us on social media, on Twitter, it's at geek underscore buddies. On Instagram, the underscore geek underscore buddies. If you'd like to follow me on social media, on Twitter, it's at Shannon underscore McClung. On Instagram, it's Shannon the Geek Buddy. If you would like to follow the absent Mr. Vogel, it is at MK Tune. Yeah. If you would like to follow Mr. Roca, the very present Mr. Roca, Thank who you. was here tonight, That's right. it is at the Roca Says. <laughs> <Woo>! <laughs> And uh, I will handle the Michael Vogel section of this. If you all want to, um, whatever we talked about tonight, whatever your feel, feelings on Superman, Liam Neeson, uh, Marvel stuff with Ray Winstone, Necessary Roughness, whatever your thoughts are on any of the subjects we talked about tonight, Richard Lewis, let, him, let us know your thoughts down below uh, here and uh, let us know what you felt about all the stuff we talked about here. Please remember to subscribe to the channel. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that bell button so you see we're dropping the content just like this. Uh, on a Friday night um, and also hit a like on this video, share it on your social media and please remember to subscribe to our podcast. That is so massive. Please go and subscribe. We're trying to get our numbers up and certainly having people like HelloFresh, having people like BetterHelp being a part of our uh, sponsorship people now or sponsorship crew now is really important to us. But what's really important is if you all patronize them and use their services in support of us, because there are codes there for Geek Buddies that you can use. We would appreciate it very much so that they keep staying on as sponsors of our show. But if you subscribe, increasing the numbers increasing increases how much they uh, want to support our show, which would mean a lot to us. Um, all right, that's it from us. You all have been amazing. Thanks for hanging out with us. Go enjoy your weekend. Have a good time. And we'll talk to you next time. And go and find out who fucked with Rebecca Ferguson. And we'll talk to you next time with another brand new episode here of The... Yeah. <laughs> Buddies! <gasps>